Chapter 1626, Flick Sword The people that weren't skilled probably felt nothing when watching the fight. But the faces of all the powerful spectators changed, particularly when they imagined what things would be like if they were facing six paths themselves. They were in utter shock, and they had no clue how they'd respond to such a strike. Everyone's eyes moved to Han Sen, wondering how he'd deal with the situation. Are you sure Dollar is fine? Tang Jinliu asked, swallowing hard. He wasn't very good with the sword, but he could feel the pressure of that strike. So, he had to ask. Gu Qi Qing was standing by his side. She said, Six Paths Emperor is strong, but this strike won't be able to hurt his opponent. Why? Tang Jinliu asked simply, as the Six Paths sword came directly in front of Han Sr. Han Sen's body glowed with holy light he raised his hand and simply flicked the Six Paths sword. And from that one small move, the sword was knocked off course. It came down near Han Sen, missing him. Outer Sky Leader and the others all looked on in shock. Normal swords couldn't feel or see how amazing it was that Six Path Strike had failed, but the elites knew. And they knew how difficult it must have been to have flicked the sword off course. Sky Sword used the power of the sky and the power of the ground. The finger mint Han Sen had gone against the sky and the ground. If he could simply defy those powers with a flick, it was a statement of the power he possessed. And if Hansen used Flick Sword, he had to destroy the sword mind of the sky and ground. If he was unable to destroy the sword mind, he wouldn't have been able to flick the sky and ground. Hansen's Flick Sword shocked many elites, even Outer Sky King. But truthfully, it wasn't that amazing. Because Hansen's sword mind received a big boost from the sword mark, he was stronger than Six Paths. Even his sword mind was. So, Six Paths' sword mind did not affect him. The power to gather the forces of the sky and ground was more than anything a borrowing of their strength. Six Paths didn't possess it himself. And momentum attacks did not work on Hansen when he used Super King Spirit. So, while the elite saw an incredible strike, Hansen saw a fairly average strike similar to what the ordinary people saw. With the right amount of strength, it wasn't difficult to block. Now that Hansen had maxed out his Super Geno points, his strength was greater than Six Paths. His ability to flick the sword away was not surprising. In the eyes of the other elites, the flick was far too shocking to witness. Good, Six Paths said. His eyes held a wild excitement, as his interest in his opponent had increased tenfold after the flick. He struck again, but this time it was different. When he unleashed the attack, the audience felt as if they themselves had been hit. Their bodies shook. Hansen remembered this strike. It was Six Paths' spirit sword path. Its title did not refer to the spirits of the sanctuary, but the spirit of a living being. The skill had a name, but it felt hollow and empty. When it struck, it came to claim your spirit. The person that recognized your greatest flaws was often yourself. The spirit sword attacked a person's spirit, and when it landed on different people, different people felt different things. When people felt the strike, they could feel it target their weaknesses. Even the audience, when trying to block it, became a bit of a mess. Some people, with weak minds, looked pale. It looked as if they themselves had been struck. They opened their mouths and coughed up blood. People with strong minds, like Outer Sky King, simply grimaced a little. Even he had been affected. Somewhat. Such powerful skills. I can't believe the spirits have a swordsman that talented. Gu Chi Cheng expressed a compliment. What is that sword skill? He is attacking Dollar, but it feels like it is attacking me. Wang Yuhang's face looked bad as he spoke. This is a sword skill that can steal a person's soul. You can't even see it being cast. It's not like he is using an ordinary skill. It is like he is controlling something that can seek out and exploit our weaknesses, Gu Qiqing said. Is such a thing possible? Tang Jinliu's eyes opened wide. He had never even considered something like this before. Lin Feng and Jing Jiwu were lost in thought for quite a bit. And when the silence between them ended, Jing Jiwu said, does this mean Dollar is battling himself? Six Paths' sword is now controlled by Dollar, so he's attacking himself, right? Yes. It does not matter how strong anyone is, they can all feel fear. It can go unnoticed, like if someone sprained their left hand, but others didn't realize it. The one with the injury can be afraid because he knows he has incurred that injury. And that fear is what can draw in the Six Paths' sword. It can bring it to target the weak spot. That means the enemy will begin to reveal their own weak spots. In my time, very few people were able to use something like this, Gu Chi Chung coldly said. Whoa. 
That's such a horrible technique, Tang Zhenliu balked. Everyone who knew about Spirit Sword now stared at Han Senator. They wanted to see how Han Sen would break the threat. People could dodge when an attack came for their weak spot. Spirit Sword itself wasn't much of a killer, unless the will of its opponent was weak. Dodging it would not be hard if it wasn't. The scary thing about Spirit Sword was that it exposed your flaws and weaknesses to the opponent. It was not something that aimed to kill you, right away. Outer Sky Leader did not think Dollar had a weak mind, so this strike probably wouldn't harm him. They wanted to see what Dollar's flaw might be, though. If Dollar won and became their enemy, they would know his weakness. It'd be a great benefit. Everyone was thinking like this while watching Han Senator. They were eager to see how he'd respond. Hansen showed no sign of a reaction, though. He didn't even move. He flicked his sword and knocked the six paths sword away again. Everyone looked at that in shock. Dollar did not have any reaction, and he revealed no weakness. It was unbelievable. There were two possibilities for this occurring. The first was that Dollar's will was strong enough to be absolutely fearless. Strange, since everyone living had the occasional negative thought. Unless you were God, being fearless sounded impossible. The second possibility was that Dollar's body was perfect, and there were no weak spots. There was nothing to expose. No matter which was correct, the entire scenario was difficult to fathom. It shouldn't have happened to any being that wasn't a god. Chapter 1627 The Real Fight Begins The truth was, the attack wasn't as annoying as everyone thought. Han Sen's Super King Spirit Mode could suppress and immunize all negative feelings of oneself. This included Heart Sword, Sonic Sword, Sky Sword, and Spirit Sword. None of those would work on Han Sen in Super King Spirit Mode. Others were in fear, seeing all those sword skills fail. To Han Sen, it was nothing spectacular. Han Sen was familiar with six path sword skills. He knew the only skills that could threaten him were blood sword and life sword. With those conning next, the real fight was only just beginning. Six paths noticed Han Sen's body change. The three sword skills he used already did not work on Han Sen, but he now looked calm. People who knew six paths knew what his calmness suggested. People that had finessed with the sword knew it was best not to wield such a weapon with jittery excitement. And when Six Paths saw an opponent that impressed him, he'd often get excited. But when Six Paths saw an opponent that could be considered his rival, he always became calmer instead. He donned the look of a proper swordsman. The sword in Six Paths' hand did not move. His face started to look red, as if his blood was boiling on the inside. It made people think he was a volcano that could erupt at a moment's notice but his eyes were a contrast to that look. They seemed extremely calm, holding neither sadness or happiness. Hansen looked dim now. He knew the real fight was only just beginning too. With Six Paths' blood sword coming up, Hansen knew he could no longer rely on tricks. He had to fight properly. Hansen took a deep breath and let the energy course through his entire body and run on a cycle. Yin Yang blast with twice the cycle allowed Hansen to finally control both Yin and Yang. Hansen had learned many different skills, and aside from sword skills, Yin Yang Blast was still something he frequently used. It was originally taught to him by Bai Ishan. It was a dangerous hypergeno art, though. The results could either be heaven or hell. If he used it well, it could prove to be the strongest hypergeno art one could use. But if it was used poorly, Hansen could damage himself badly. Yin Yang Blast was banned in the Alliance due to its power and volatility despite the ease of learning. The sword was like a bird flying low at Han Senator. The violence was coming fast and quiet. It was impressive enough just to watch. Even if you did not know how to use a sword, you could tell how accurate it was. You could tell how fast and steady it was coming. Hansen did not have a sword, but even if he did, he wouldn't use it against six paths. Although Hansen's sword skills were no weaker than six paths techniques, if they fought sword to sword, Hansen only had a 40% chance of winning. Hansen was good with sword skills, but the sword was more of a tool for him. If he used a spear or a knife, it was all very similar to him. But to six paths, a sword was a sword, and there was no comparison to anything else. Facing six paths and his sword skills, Hansen did not dodge. He did not have sword heart, but he still had the inherent will to fight. It did not make much of a difference whether he had a sword or not. He wanted to win just as much. Either way, Hansen flicked his finger, unleashing a Yin Yang blast of power at Six Path's sword. The sword went three inches off, course. 
Six Paths Sword Heart remained calm, but his sword skills were like a volcano or a tsunami. Fast, faster. Hard, harder. Accurate, more accurate. Steady, steadier. Six Paths Sword was harder than ever. It was crazier than ever, too. By the end, you couldn't even see Six Paths Sword nor his body. All you could see was a sword light flickering around Hans Senator it left sore marks everywhere. Hanston was in the arena, but his arms moved blindingly fast with all ten fingers flicking in different directions. You could hear the sword and fingers colliding against each other repeatedly. It happened so many times, it was impossible to keep an accurate count of how many times they had hit each other. Everyone stopped breathing. It was like if you stopped to blink, you'd miss an insane match. You wouldn't want to waste a single second. So many creatures were in the stadium, watching, but still, it was all deathly quiet. The only thing that could be heard was the sound of the fighters striking. Powerful sword skill meets a powerful plan, Furnace Emperor said with a sigh. Sumi, who was next to him, looked confused. Father, what plan? Sumi could tell Six Paths was strong, but he was not sure why Furnace Emperor said plan. Furnace Emperor sighed again and said, Dollar's skills aren't special. He has calculated his strength, and Six Paths' sword skills are in fact stronger. If I fought against him, I know I'd lose worse. But sword skills require an accurate judgment of strength. Stabbing and slashing can change the entire direction of a fight. Dollar can see through Six Paths' sword skill, and the fingers keep flicking to where they need to be. It looks very dangerous, but it isn't. Does that mean Dollar knows the weaknesses of Six Paths' sword skills? Sumi asked. No, it does not. There are no invisible powers or factors here. If you want a sword that is very hard, it will lack flexibility. That is not a flaw. That is just how things are. Dollar uses the right strength for the right situation, Furnace said. Sumi looked as if he understood, but he didn't. Then he asked, I still don't understand. What's the difference between that and weaknesses? Furnace Emperor, with a wry smile, shook his head. I don't know. I can tell Six Paths' sword skills are strong, but Dollar sees right through them. Many elites discuss the battle between Hansen and Six Paths. Dollar is straddling the edge of a knife. If he slips up, he'll be killed by Six Paths' sword, the Outer Sky Leader said, looking at Battle God. Strange. Dollar seems to know Six Paths' sword skills. Otherwise, how could he make the correct judgment of Six Paths' constantly changing move set? The Sacred Leader looked suspicious. Demigod Gu, what is happening now? Wang Yuhang could not see the fight, so he asked Gu Qiqing. Something dangerous. Gu Qiqing frowned. Chapter 1628, Taking Advantage. Who is in danger? Tang Zhenliu asked. Dollar. He is gambling. Even if you successfully gambled a hundred times, all it takes is one loss. If he loses, he'll be done for, Gu Qiqing explained. Gambling? Everyone looked at Gu Qiqing with confusion. The fight between Hansen and Six Paths was too fast for them to keep track of. Gu Chi Ching, after a moment of thought, said, Six Paths Emperor's sword skills are incredible. He is a champion with the sword. He won't grant an opponent a moment of reprieve, and he is flawless. He does everything he can to take the advantage and make his opponent lose hope of victory. His sword skills are something you can't overcome. Does that mean Dollar is actually losing? Wang Yuhang opened his eyes wide. Gu Qingqing shook her head. Maybe not. If it was someone else, they might use strength to break the attack. If the power was sufficient to suppress six paths, his sword skill would break. I don't think anyone can possess more strength than six paths in the fourth god sanctuary, however. So, Dollar is doing something different. He is gambling a potential victory. Gamble? Wang Yuhang still did not understand. He had no clue what she was talking about. Gu Qingqing looked at Han Sen and said, Yes, he is gambling. The champion sword is using his experience to beat the opponent. He's not supposed to reveal a single flaw he has to his foe. Dollar, on the other hand, is doing things differently. He is not trying to uncover flaws through skills. He is going with the flow, rather. When the enemy strikes, he falls back. When the enemy falls back, he strikes. It's keeping six paths from gaining the advantage and pushing Dollar to the point where his hope begins to wane. That sounds good. Why is it gambling? Tang Zhenliu did not understand, either. Yu Qiqing said quietly, sword skills can be different. You cannot predict where Six Paths Emperor, who is so strong, or an average run-of-the-mill swordsman, 
will put their strength. Now they knew why Dollar was gambling. It was hard to predict how an opponent would use their sword precisely, especially for a fight as wild as that. Everything was happening at breakneck speed, and it was difficult to determine where the next strike would fall. If Hansen did this correctly, he could slowly eliminate six path sword power. But that was just the power of his sword, and there was still no guarantee of victory. If he blocked the wrong direction and failed to beat back the six path sword, things could go bad. All the time, Hansen was using his finger to flick six pads blade away. It didn't cost much strength, but it required a lot of unflagging judgment that was much harder than exerting total strength. He couldn't afford to miss once. If this continues, Dollar will miss and six pads is going to win. He has gotten so strong. I hope I don't have to meet him until I reach the rankings of the Ten Son of Gods. A powerful elite now realized Hansen was actually in trouble. It was a gamble that he could not afford to lose. Dollar only had one life, whereas Six Pads had many. Time passed, and the fight raged on. The faces of the audience began to change. Weird. Why does he keep succeeding? Does he know Six Pads' skills better than Six? Pads himself? No way. How can he always be right and never miss? This Dollar is weird. Does he have falsified sky power, and that means he always moves correctly? This is unbelievable. The match continued, alongside much discussion. No one understood why Dollar was so lucky in his judgment. Interesting. Jade Shura looked at Hansen with much intrigue. Six Pads looked interested, too. He was keen to see how long his opponent could last he was pushing Bloodsword to the max. But still, he could not penetrate Hansen's defense. As everyone looked on, trying to predict how much longer he'd last, the sword light suddenly disappeared. Six Pads withdrew his sword and stopped attacking. That is some incredible power control and foresight. You are undoubtedly the best I have ever seen, Six Paths spoke to Han Sr. Hansen looked at Six Paths but did not say anything. He knew the next attack would be even scarier. Life Sword was even more frightening than Blood Sword. If Blood Sword was a champion sword, Life Sword was a killer sword. You could predict the champion sword, but not the killer sword. Hansen was not psychic. He was just excellent when it came to prediction. Six Paths Emperor then turned into a different person. Now, he was like an animal that was full of the wild unknown. He brandished his sword towards Hansen, prompting Hansen to flick it again. But this time, he could not send it astray. Six Paths' sword skills had changed. He started to slash without a moment of reprieve in between. Six Paths became a monster that wished to strangle Hans' senator. He came out from different directions to attack Hansen's weak spot, and he took aim at his life door. It wasn't steady, and the chance of calculating the attacks was non-existent. Every slash did not seem connected, and they couldn't be predicted. Hansen had no choice but to fight. Hansen's body then glowed with holy light. He could not predict the flight of the six-path sword, and he had to react instantly. They were both like a pair of ancient monsters, battling in a primitive arena. These two are too scary. We're only talking about battle skills, and yet they can cause a reaction such as this? Their battle powers must be inside their bones, Furnace Emperor said with a little awe. Dollar is starting to take advantage, the sacred leader spoke to himself. It wasn't just sacred leader thinking this. The entire elite audience had watched Six Paths unleash himself. Yet when he used Life Sword, he was suppressed by Dollar and put at a disadvantage. Powerful Dollar. I wonder where he comes from. Outer Sky looked confused. Six Paths Emperor used Life Sword and got suppressed. This had only happened once before. And at that time, Six Paths hadn't been this strong, either. Chapter 1629, Six Paths Become One Hansen believed going up against Six Paths' Life Sword would be difficult. After all, Life Sword resided at the heart of Six Paths. It was his essence. If you took away the limitations of skills, all he had left was primitive drive. Six Path Sword skills, when cast, were something scary to behold. This would be the sixth sword skill, and it was the only one from the set Hansen had heard about, but not actually seen in action. It wasn't that Six Paths did not want to show it to Hansen, it was just that Life Sword was something of a personal achievement to learn. It was pointless to simply see it. But Hansen knew it was strong. He just didn't know how strong. And now that he could see it, he was getting a feel for its power. It wasn't as threatening as Blood Sword, though. A battle that was based on reactions and strength was something Hansen was good at. That was what he did before he amassed an array of hypergeno arts, 
After all, Six Paths had learned a lot, but Hansen's combat abilities weren't anything modest. He also had the advantage of the Dongshan aura. It would be an advantage that lent itself to any of his fights. Seeing Dollar suppressing Six Paths, the audience was all in shock. Hansen kept flicking his fingers until Six Paths inevitably had to fall back. He couldn't fight him. The fingers of his opponent were so sharp. The Six Paths sword was soon delivered a deep scratch. Scary. Too scary. Who is this Dollar? Dollar is good. This is the rhythm to beating Six Paths. Strong. He is strong. He is my idol. Some of the demigods who weren't as talented hadn't been able to tell what they were seeing before, but this bit was plain for all to understand. Six Paths had been suppressed by his opponent and couldn't fight back. Seeing Six Paths incur more wounds across his body, Sacred Emperor frowned. Is Six Paths Emperor going to lose? Gu Qingqing's expression was complicated. It looks like Six Paths is going to lose. But Hansen did not think this. Six Paths had used all six of his sword skills and had ended up suppressed, yes, but Hansen didn't think it was going to be an easy win. Six Paths' eyes were still brimming with clarity and the fire of combat. Hansen was doing something that was akin to damming a river with mud or throwing rocks onto a spreading fire. It seemed useful, but there was that constant worry that it was only a matter of time before the containment was rendered useless in a sudden outburst of power that had been held back and built up. Hansen knew he couldn't stop. He attacked faster and faster with the desire to kill six paths before the sudden frenzy could manifest. Blood was spilling and bones were breaking. Six paths' wounds were getting worse, but despite all that, his eyes shone brighter. The moment six paths relaxed his body, Hansen felt as if he had just gone eye to eye with a viper. He stumbled back with goosebumps. He looked at Six Paths, who was covered in blood and still standing. Six Paths was still clutching his sword, but the tip was low against the ground. The sword mines were all gone, and he looked like someone who had forgotten how to use the blade. Thank you. Without you, I wouldn't have been able to reach this step. Six Paths looked at Hansen with excitement. Hansen just looked back at Six Paths without saying anything. The spirit still looked like an ordinary person, but there was a sudden aura of danger. Hansen hadn't felt this level of danger before. As a reward, please accept my final sword. Six Paths said this right before lifting Six Paths' sword. When he raised that sword, it felt as if all the power in the world was now coming down on Hans' senator. It was as if the sword was at the center of the universe, and everything existed around it. Six Paths and one? Hansen looked surprised. Heart Sword was about Wielder's true self. Sky Sword was about the sky and the earth. Sonic Sword was about the acoustical powers. Spirit was about the spirit. Blood Sword was all about living. Life Sword was about existence. When they all combined into one, it made six paths become a part of the world itself. Like a true sword master, his sword became the center of the world. Boom. The power he had gathered up was too much, and the unbreakable arena was actually shattered. The sword created a giant crater in the ground, as the previously standing six paths was lifted into the air to float above the ground. The entire power was gathered there. The audience was in shock. They noticed that all their powers had been magnetized towards six paths. It felt as if they themselves were going to be processed into the sword he wielded. Some of the audience quickly cast skills to prevent power leakage, but many of the weaker beings were unable to do this and they found their energy stolen and pulled into the sword. The strong spirits could stop this from happening naturally. But that had to be possible, otherwise, none would have been able to watch the match. Six Paths is becoming a god. Outer Sky Leader looked at Six Paths like an unrivaled sword master. Many of the other elites were shocked, too. After this fight, Six Paths is sure to become a god very soon. I can't believe he is breaking through now. Six Paths is on the verge of becoming a god. Dollar is in trouble. Gu Qiqing looked glum. Tang Zhenyu looked to be in shock, and he couldn't even find the words to speak. Simply seeing it all through the Marshall Hall's tablet was enough to make him feel suffocated. I am the sword. The sword is me. A sword can traverse six paths and become one. When six paths pointed his sword to the sky, his power had reached maximum capacity. The way he spoke made it sound as if he was a god, and it frightened all those who listened. Creatures that had weak minds were already prepared to obey him, as if he truly was a god. Creatures with strong wills could feel the pressure, as well, and they felt as if they wanted to throw up because of it. 
After that, Six Paths swung a sword. A sword light was cast through the arena, covering it in its entirety. All in its proximity were swallowed. In that moment, Six Paths was like a god that could not be beaten. Everyone believed that it was now the end. Chapter 1630 The Power of Dollar Dong In the sword light that brought ruin to everything, a golden light suddenly cracked the fabric of space. It traveled through the sword light and smacked into Six Paths' sword, then stuck to it. Everyone realized that the golden light was actually a coin. It was a beautiful coin. Boom. The Six Paths' sword, which had previously been at the center of existence, had now been wrecked by that coin. The power that was going into the sword then started to travel into the coin. The scariest thing about this was the fact that the super elites, who had previously been able to stop their energy from leaking, were now unable to stop the process. The leaders of Outer Sky and Sacred also suffered under the coin. A portion of their energy was being stolen by the coin. Even the power and energy of the Six Paths sword was being taken by the coin. Eventually, the coin was bigger than the sword itself. Dong. A crunchy noise sounded, and Six Paths Emperor was no longer able to control the sword. He allowed it to fall, and when it came to a stop, it stood erect with its tip dug into the ground. Six Paths Emperor was still clutching the handle, and it was clear he wished to pull it out of the ground, but couldn't the sword actually got heavier and heavier, and as it sank into the earth, Six Paths Emperor started to go down with it. All the beings in the audience were shocked, watching was what was happening to the Six Paths sword. The power Six Paths had gathered was nearly godlike, and yet, it had been beaten by what looked like a measly coin. His sword could not take the weight. Six Paths, who had now lost the sword, was frozen. That sword was something he had never lost before. To him, his life was his sword and his sword was his life. Having now lost his sword, he no longer wished to do combat. Even God is afraid of collecting taxes. Collecting taxes is scary. Hansen sighed and then he flicked his finger once more. A shower of coins began to rain, and they covered the entire arena. They landed on six paths and frightening numbers until he was buried beneath a mountain of them. A severe weight pressed down on him. Six paths didn't move. All he could do was turn his head to see the coins that fell. He looked at Hansen and smiled. I lost. The sword is yours. There will be no other six paths sword. When you see me again, all you will see is six paths. After that, Six Paths Emperor wiggled his fingers. He was disconnecting himself from the Six Paths sword. And when he did that, the sword released its power and just fell on the floor. Six Paths Emperor's mouth bled, but he still worked up a smile before leaving. He conceded, leaving behind the Six Paths sword that was on the ground. Hansen did not feel joyous, though. After that fight, Six Paths had decided to abandon his sword. The sword in his heart must have been very scary and if they fought again, victory would be even harder to achieve. Hansen picked up the sword and exited the arena, returning to his shelter. Hansen and Six Paths had left the stage, but the battle had been incredibly exciting. It had shocked the entire Fourth God Sanctuary. Six Paths was half a god, but he had lost to the enigmatic Dollar. Everyone was curious about his true identity, and everyone thought Dollar would win the entire divinity's bout. He would surpass the Ten Son of Gods and become the First Son of God. The media and the Alliance had reported the news, as well. Champions return, the coin crushes everything, God versus God, the power of dollar. All sorts of articles were released after the fight. They spoke passionately about the battle and dollar's victory there. Dollar is the best. He must be able to reach first place. Don't worry, dollar will never disappoint us. If he wants to, he'll definitely wind up in first place. The fourth god's sanctuary's divinities bout was something that had little to do with the general populace of the alliance, but it was still a popular topic of conversation, nonetheless. Not many people saw the fight, either. And journalists were only able to make write-ups through interviews that were held with demigod witnesses. It was the only way for them to learn what happened. Due to their inability to locate Dollar, the journalists asked the demigods that watched the fight. Fong Mingxuan's interview was the most popular, and that was because he was famous and knew a lot of people. He had interviewed many demigods in the past, and he was a big fan of Dollar. People that liked Dollar would often go and read his articles. Demigod Tang, what is your opinion of the fight between Dollar and Six Paths? Fong Mingquan interviewed Tang Jinliu, a person he was quite close with. Tang Jinliu smiled and said, 
Where do I begin? I mean, Six Paths was strong, but he just wasn't on the same level as Dollar. Dollar will be able to get to the top 10 Son of Gods, for sure, and he might even achieve first place. Most demigods that accepted the interview said many similar things. They all thought Dollar could reach the top 10, at the very least. But there were some unpleasant voices amidst the crowds, and some whispered Dollar was simply lucky. If he reached the top 10, it'd be through good fortune. There were many powerful spirits and creature ahead, and with them thinking Dollar was a cocky person, they didn't think he'd reach the top 100. There were quite a few arguments surrounding this, and the Alliance turned its focus to the issue. The elites in the Fourth God's Sanctuary spent a lot of time researching the fight. They were looking for a way they might be able to disarm the coin and beat Dollar if he ever came for them. Right now, Dollar had become their biggest, number one enemy. He was the likeliest candidate to reach the top 10 thus far. The people felt very lucky when it was confirmed they might not have to face Dollar. But for those that had to fight him, they researched and researched. They wanted to find a way they might win. Hansen didn't think much about any of this, though. He just retired to the practice of Dong Shen Sutra. The coin Geno Core had reached super class after the fight, and he was fairly confident he could reach first place. If Hansen could get all his Geno Cores to super, that would be even easier. Before the next round started, Hansen practiced constantly with the Dong Shen Sutra. When Hansen entered the arena next, it was four days later. He didn't have to fight, though, as every opponent he went up against had to concede. No one dared to do combat with him. The opponents of the next four rounds conceded, and all super elites grew fearful of Dollar. Chapter 1631 Steel Dollar's name was very famous. Humans had also gotten used to referring to him as the Light of Hope. Even so, there were a few unfriendly voices. A widely known professional published an article that presented a number of reasons why Dollar was not actually human and was in fact a spirit and it repeatedly reiterated that humans should not be so joyous in celebrating the figure. Words like those incited the ire of Dollar's fanboys and debates raged between the camps and the virtual community. The professional was earnest in his opinion and supported it, but he had even gone so far as to say that even if Dollar was proven to be a human, there was no chance he could breach the top 10 Son of Gods. He also predicted Dollar would have trouble in his fifth round and that he would get no further than the seventh match. Hansen looked at who his opponent would be in the fifth round. He had only seen who he was to fight in the seventh round, and that was Jade Shura, the supposed queen of the Shura. He didn't realize he would also have a strong opponent challenge him in the fifth round. Aqua Sunbeast was a berserk super creature. Hansen didn't realize he would be an opponent. But Hansen was a man that wanted to come out on top, and he didn't care about who or what got in the way. If Jade Shura did not have a special identity, Hansen would not have cared too much about her, either. The matches Hansen had watched the most were not Jade Shura's, though. They were the matches of Gu Chicheng, Outer Sky Leader, and Sacred Leader. They didn't encounter strong opponents. Everyone who faced off against them ended up conceding. Gu Chicheng had a few matches but her opponents were all killed with a single hit. She didn't even allow them the berth to draw a weapon. But today was the day for Han Soon to battle Aqua Sun Beast. Many people came to watch it, and there was a far greater turnout than there was last time. Because Han Sin's past four opponents had decided to throw in the towel, many more came to watch, as well. They were all keen to see what sort of power Han Sun possessed. That expert who wrote the article, is he a demigod? How did he know Dollar would go up against a berserk super creature on the fifth match? Wang Yuhang looked at the Marshall Hall's tablet. You're reading a novel full thanks. What? You know about this Aqua Sun Beast? Tang Jinliu asked Wang Yuhang. Wang Yuhang nodded and said, I asked Cheap Sheep to collect information. Aqua Sun Beast is famous. He claimed 80,000 miles of the Aqua Sea, and he eats emperors. He is powerful, and I certainly don't expect him to concede. What kind of power does it wield? Lin Feng asked. I don't know. Anyone who's dared to enter the Aqua Sea has died inside its belly. No one has seen how it kills people. Wang Yuhang shook his head. Yu Qiqing coldly approached them and said, The power of the Aqua Sun Beast is not as mighty as the Destroyer Wolf. But with that being said, the elites of the Fourth God Sanctuary would prefer to challenge the Destroyer Wolf than venture near the Aqua Sea. Perhaps they can give you an idea of how scary it is. Do you know what power it wields? Wang Yuhang asked. I don't know. 
Gu Qingqing shook her head. That expert is smart. Aqua Sun Beast is so mysterious, it might cause dollar trouble. Tang Zhenliu frowned. What is there to be afraid of? He defeated six paths. After doing that, there is no need for him to fear any monster. Wang Yuhang was confident. While they discussed, it was time for Dollar and Aqua Sun Beast to do battle. Hansen, wrapped up in the holy light, entered the arena. He didn't see Aqua Sun Beast immediately. When the time for the creature to join was almost up, a door of light was revealed upon the arena. A beast that looked like a jade Kirin came out of it. It stood in front of Hansen, not saying anything. All it did was spit out a green orb. The orb's size was double that of a basketball, and its color was like green jade. The orb also possessed a strange glowing symbol of some kind. When the orb showed up, a strange green light covered the entire arena. Hansen used holy light to fend off that green light, but the green light didn't seem to be destructive. He wasn't entirely sure what it did or what it meant. Amidst Hansen's confusion, he suddenly heard the aqua sun beast roar. Then, the symbol upon the orb began to glow. And then, the same strange symbol appeared on Hansen's body. It was atop him, stuck. Oh, no. That is the power of a seal. Jing Jiwu was shocked. He has the same power as you do? Lin Feng looked at him glumly. Jing Jiwu nodded and said, It is the same, yes, but I only have it at gemstone class. Its sealing power will be far stronger than mine. Now that dollar has been touched by that green light, he will have been sealed. I doubt he'll even be able to move. This power can constrict dollar just like that? Tang Liu looked to be in disbelief. Jing Jiwu had a wry smile. I'm only gemstone class. My sealing power is enough to constrict a super creature for three seconds, though. They can't move, no matter what. Jade Sun Beast is much stronger than me, and even if Six Paths was the one in the arena, he'd suffer the same fate. You're reading a novel full thanks. No wonder he is so strong. It looks like we should never underestimate the abilities of a single super creature. Tang Zhenliu's face changed. Dollar has been too careless. He shouldn't have allowed himself to be snared right away like that, Wang Yuhang said. It looks like that expert was right. Dollar is in trouble, Tang Zhenliu said. The audience could observe the sealing powers of Aqua Sun Beast, and when they saw it, they were shocked. From what was seen in the match between Hansen and Six Paths, defeating Hansen through sheer power was very difficult. No one could be sure. Aqua Sunbeast's ceiling power was like the issuing of a warning. Can Dollar get out of that ceiling power? Sumi looked at Han Sr. It will be difficult, if it's possible at all. Aqua Sunbeast is probably one of the best when it comes to ceiling powers. It is difficult to evade the beast's ceiling light, but now that he is sealed, not even emperors can escape something like that, Furnace Emperor said. Aqua Sunbeast thought Hansen was now unable to get away. He grabbed Hansen with the plan of placing the human in his mouth. Seeing that the beast was about to bite his head off, Hansen pulled out a stone pipe and put it to his lips. He took aim and blew into it. Ping! A red light went right into Aqua Sunbeast's mouth. It blew up the beast's entire head, resulting in a mess of blood. Chapter 1632 The Seventh Round Has Come the professional and the virtual community got stomped on. Everyone commented and asked for his opinion on how Dollar effortlessly broke the fifth opponent's head. Your prediction was accurate, and Dollar really was given a lot of trouble. The blood must have taken ages to clean. Blowing up his head in less than a minute must have been really difficult. This is worrisome. It was such a big creature. Think of all the meat. I don't know if we should bake, grill, or boil it. Of course, we can actually prepare it in 10 different ways. We can fry it, stir fry it, steam it, roast it, deep fry it, slow cook it, put it in sauce, flamethrower it, nuke it, or just barbecue it. The professional said Dollar wouldn't get past the seventh round. This is great. The professional didn't respond, but after a while, he departed and left behind a single note. It said Dollar was guaranteed not to make it past the seventh round. It made everyone go crazy once again. In the fourth god's sanctuary, all the beings were trying to find out what element Dollar was attuned with. The ceiling power hadn't worked on him, and he seemed absolutely perfect in every way. He had no known flaw. It gave the others who wanted the title Son of God a headache. Many super elites investigated these events, but they could not find anything. But they were able to confirm that the pipe Hansen used was the Blow Blood Geno Core from Drink Blood Emperor. 
that confirmed the sealing power did not work on Dollar. Low blood Geno core had been sealed, and over the years, none had been able to unseal it. Yet, when Dollar had it, he had somehow been able to do just that. Now people were able to confirm that the coin Geno core they had witnessed was actually the coin Geno core on the leaderboard, and it belonged to Dollar. Everyone was talking about this, in fervent wonder about who might actually be able to stop Dollar. People investigated Dollar's list of battles painstakingly, and aside from Aqua Sunbeast, Dollar would go up against Jade Shura on the seventh round. Jade Shura's performance was outstanding. She hadn't beaten Beat Six Paths and Aqua Sun Beast like Hansen had, but she was great nonetheless, especially since she had falsified sky powers. That was something many beings were flat out afraid of. It was a shame God Lair Luo hadn't decided to join in, but nobody dared to ask him to compete. Still, that meant the connection between him and Jade Shura would to remain a complete mystery. People assumed she was the queen of the Shura, a conclusion drawn from both her body shape and name. Still, people did not know why the queen possessed the falsified sky powers. Because her identity made things mysterious, it heightened the allure of the seventh match. And all wished to find out which of the two would end up stronger. When calculating the odds from a simple power perspective, the results favored Dollar. But falsified sky powers never missed. That power could very well kill Dollar in a second flat. Regardless, all the beings were extremely excited for the upcoming match. The beings that would later go up against the victor of the match paid extra attention to it, as well. It did not matter who won, as long as they could learn a thing or two. Inside the Shura Palace, a young Shura lady stood next to the Shura Queen. If Hansen saw who this woman was, he'd have been shocked. That was because the Shura lady looked just like Zero. She was obviously older than Zero, but she was practically the same in all other physical aspects. Minger, you need to be careful tomorrow. That dollar is unusual. The Shura Queen spoke to the young Shura. Mother, do not worry. I will beat him, and I will rise to take first place. I will tell everyone that Jade Shura is the greatest of all creations. Yuminga spoke with absolute confidence. The Shura Queen laughed. She held her hands and said, You cannot be careless. Our falsified sky powers still possess flaws. Until we obtain the second half of the falsified sky sutra, it will never be perfect. I know. But do not worry. The deal for the next ten years will result in me beating Luo Haiang. And then, I will obtain the second half of the falsified sky sutra, Yumingo said. The Shura Queen shook her head. She knew her daughter well, and she knew the girl wouldn't listen. But the Shura Queen wasn't too worried. Yuminga was the most talented person in Jade Shura to have learned the falsified Sky Sutra. She was so strong, and there was no need to be concerned with her safety. Even if she was unable to win, she could still survive whatever came her way. Hansen, meanwhile, was investigating something he was holding. After killing Aqua Sun Beast, he didn't get the Beast Soul. But he did obtain the dead body, Geno Core, and Life Geno Essence. Life Geno Essences were now useless for him and he gave the meat to Little Silver and the others. He brought the Geno core with him, though. A green jade orb with a weird symbol of light. It contained a strong sealing power, that much was certain. If other people did not have a sealing power, they could not make use of the orb. And it was at times like this, the benefit of Hansen's collection of spirit Geno points really showed. Hansen did not possess the power of sealing, but with the sealing spirit Geno points, he could simulate sealing powers to make use of the orb. The orb was useful, and if monsters were touched by the sealing light, even a super-class little star would end up stunned. This is good stuff. Hansen played around with the orb and came to like it. It was called the God Orb, but it was not perfect. If Little Star was traveling, the God Orb would not be able to shine on him, for example. The sealing light could also be blocked by objects, such as shields. But still, even if a shield was deflecting the sealing light, the shield itself would end up getting sealed. This applied to armor, as well. If the armor was sealed, your body would be locked in place. Hansen took the god orb and returned to Divinity's bout. The sixth enemy conceded, a move prompted by witnessing Aqua Sun Beast's merciless execution. So, Hansen exited the background and waited for the seventh match. He was curious about the Jade Shura. Chapter 1633, Falsified Skyhead Luo Haidang, who did not show much interest in Divinity's bout, went straight to the martial hall when the seventh match began. 
He was eager to watch the fight between Dollar and Jade Shura. Luo Li walked over to Luo Haidang and with a serious look, asked him, Sir, is that Jade Shura the real Shura Queen? Luo Haidang sat down and said, If she isn't the Shura Queen, then things will be much worse. Why is that? Luo Li asked, confused. If she isn't the Shura Queen, then that means the Jade Shura have a second scary person, Luo Haidang said calmly. Luo Li thought that made sense. The Shura Queen was already giving him a headache, but the prospect of a second individual like this would be worse for the Luo family. The Jade Shura family had many elites, whereas the Luo family had no one. Aside from Luo Haidang, none were strong enough to represent them. I hope Dollar can kill Jade Shura. Even if she is not the Shura Queen, killing her should sort the problem out, Luo Li thought. She didn't dare say it out loud in front of Luo Haidang. Luo Haidang did not say anything. He simply watched the stream displayed upon the Marshall Hall tablet, waiting for Dollar and Jade Shura's match to begin. When it was time for the fight to start, Hansen strode right into the battleground. Jade Shura hadn't arrived yet, so there was a bit of a wait. When the entry time was almost over, Jade Shura made her appearance. She looked the same as she had before, clad in black armor. She had a pair of purple horns and a mask on. She's not the Shura Queen. Luo Hiding frowned as this was bad news for the Luo family. Hansen checked out Jade Shura carefully. He had never met the Shura Queen, so he could not tell if it was really her before him. The pros love to enter at the last second, don't they? Does that make you look stronger or something? Hansen asked after she walked in. He didn't care whether she entered early or late. He just wanted to find out whether or not she was the Shura Queen, judging from her response. Jade Shura coldly responded, Isn't it a good thing? It's me being merciful, letting you live a little longer. After hearing her speak, Hansen was able to guess that it wasn't the Shura Queen. With the Shura Queen's age and manners, she wouldn't have replied like that. Hansen thought it must have just been some young Shura lady. If she is not the Shura Queen, she must at least be from Jade Shura. Hansen thought then he said, You are kind. I am not. But if you are willing to concede, you can walk away with your life, Jade Shura said. Hansen laughed and said, You are confident. I wonder what your strength is really like. Try me, and you just might find out. Jade Shura gave a grunt. Then, she raised her hand and began to build up falsified, sky power in the cup of her palm. The crowd felt that they could almost see something there, like she was holding a mirage. Hansen looked at the left hand she had raised and frowned. Jade Shura only had half of the falsified sky sutra, but still, the level of power she possessed seemed nearly perfect to Han Sr. Luo Haidang saw the problem, too, and he frowned. How is that possible? Her falsified sky power is like you. Did they get the second part of the falsified sky sutra? Luo Li screamed, completely shocked. She couldn't believe it. Luo Haidang shook his head and said, No, she didn't get it. Then why is her falsified sky power? Luo Li couldn't speak. Luo Haidang had the complete falsified sky sutra. That meant she was accusing him of something. Luo Haidang looked at Jade Shura's left hand and said, We possess the falsified Sky Sutra, but it was something we stole from a tomb belonging to the Shura, and we need Shura blood to practice it. That means it was originally a skill for the Shura. Jade Shura bred with the Shura for many generations, so their blood is probably completely Shura now. But it still can't be like the absolutely pure Shura that cannot practice the falsified Sky Sutra. Jade Shura's blood is strong enough to almost complete the falsified Sky Sutra, so she is scarier than the Shura Queen herself. If she really did come to own the complete version, there's no telling how strong she might become. Can Dollar beat her? Asking that made Luo Li feel guilty. Luo Haidang shook his head and said, It'll just be difficult. Her falsified Sky power is close to my level. Very few beings can block her attacks. Dollar will have to get rid of her before she strikes. Otherwise, I fear it is already too late. Luo Li heard this and felt very anxious. Jade Shura had already gathered up her falsified sky power while Dollar watched. He didn't even seem interested in attacking her. What is wrong with him? Does he not know the strength of falsified sky power? What is he standing there for? Go kill her. Luo Li felt a need for haste, but no matter how she felt, all she could do was watch. Many creatures shared the same feelings. Those who knew what falsified sky powers could do were confused. They did not know why Dollar was refusing to attack. That Dollar is conceited. 
He is waiting for Jade Shure to strike first, Furnace Emperor said while observing Dollar. Doesn't he know that falsified sky powers will not miss? If Jade Shura strikes, he's a dead man. Sumi looked on strangely. True, but everything around this dollar is weird. Perhaps he does have some power that can go against it. Furnace Emperor was not entirely sure. Jade Shura saw dollar unmoving, waiting for her to strike first. She looked annoyed, and she thought to herself, if you want to die, then fine. After that, she swung her hand. An invisible force came rushing forward to haunt Senator, and everyone's eyes traced it from her left hand. The strike was nothing beautiful. There was no light or ripple as it came, but people knew what the strike did, and they knew how frightening it truly was. Hansen looked at Jade Shura's left hand. Still, he did not strike. He just wanted to see how far she had come with her practice of the Falsified Sky Sutra. Chapter 1634 Useless Falsified Sky Power Everyone's focus was on Hans Senator they knew watching Jade Shura was pointless. Falsified sky power was invisible anyway, and if they watched her, they wouldn't see how the attack killed him. Is Dollar playing around? This is falsified sky power he's up against. Tang Zhenliu's hands were getting sweaty. He wasn't related to the Luo family, and it was Ashura using that power. He earnestly hoped Dollar would win. Nobody replied to him, because they didn't know the answer, either. Everyone was intensely focused on Dollar. Just as most people were expecting Dollar to start spewing blood, he moved half a step. He did it casually. But after that step, everyone froze. After that step, nothing happened. And the fact that nothing happened was what struck people with disbelief. Falsified sky power had been cast, but nothing became of it. It was strange, and everyone turned to look at Hansen with surprise, even Jade Shura. No one could believe that the falsified sky powers had missed Dollar completely. Did he dodge the falsified sky power? Luo Li's eyes opened wide. She had seen all that transpired, but she still couldn't make sense of it. Luo Haiteng looked just as surprised, but he only looked at Dollar without saying a word, retreating into thought. Jade Shura was wearing a mask, so nobody could see her face. But Jade Shura knew her own face was full of shock. She couldn't accept what had just happened, and she didn't believe her falsified sky power could be avoided. Because Jade Shura only had half of the falsified sky sutra, it was not impossible to dodge. But hers was different. Her falsified sky power was almost perfect due to her blood. In recent years, no one had been able to dodge her ability. Jade Shura's eyes looked cold. She didn't say anything and simply cast it again. She swung both hands and kept repeatedly slashing towards Dollar. Hansen remained still and firm, only moving to casually dodge the strikes. And still, Jade Shura's falsified sky sutra did not hit Hansen, and he managed to dodge each and every attack. Jade Shura's falsified sky powers were almost perfect. Even if she had a variant that was absolutely perfect, Han Sin's Dong Xian Sutra would allow him to dodge it. He wouldn't be struck by it. Is it fake? Perhaps? It must be a fake falsified sky power. SH asterisk T. Dollar is too strong. Falsified sky power is useless against him. I must be seeing a fake falsified sky power. Dollar is scary. Not only did the ceiling power not work against him, but neither has. Falsified sky powers. What power can work against him? Dollar will surely get into the top ten son of gods. None of the beings had expected this. God Lair Luo killed everything with his falsified sky power, and he had even taken down a super shelter with it, so humans could have a place to call home in the fourth god sanctuary. Spirits and creatures knew how powerful it could be. Even top rank spirits and creatures would not underestimate falsified sky powers. And yet, Dollar had effortlessly evaded it. It made them wonder if the ability they were witnessing was fake. The falsified sky power is not fake. It's just that Dollar is so strong. He broke six paths and is immune to ceiling powers. Not even falsified sky powers can hurt him. Where did he come from, wielding such power? I have never heard of such a thing before. Sacred's leader frowned while looking at Han Sr. Aha, see. This is a strong human. Falsified sky powers are nothing. Dollar is God. In front of God, everything is rubbish. Many human demigods were fans of Dollar, but now they were even more hyped. They all wished they could be like Dollar, making battle with enemies of the different species and divinities bout and achieving a more widespread human glory. Spirits and creatures did not believe Dollar was human. It's not an elite human, it is a creature. 
It's not a creature, it is a spirit. The audience argued amongst themselves. Inside the arena, Yuminger was still reeling in shock. The power she was most proud of had proven useless against her opponent. No matter how hard she tried, the falsified sky powers had lost their luster. Han Sen's moving body started to look bigger and bigger in her eyes. Her opponent looked so mysterious, and it knocked her confidence down more than a few pegs. Hansen now fully understood how proficient she really was with falsified sky powers. Her ability was far from being perfect, and it was much worse than even Zero. If Han Yin became super class, she'd be better than Jade Shura, as well. That Jade Shura is a potential threat. Even half of the falsified sky sutra is extremely dangerous. I should kill her to avoid further problems. Han Sen's expression turned murderous, and he suddenly started sprinting towards her. Yuminger's confidence had been trampled, and her attacking momentum was now low, but she was still able to dodge the punch Hansen threw. But Hansen turned and revealed his blow blood Gino core, then he blew it at her. A red light came flying at her face. Yumingo had the best blood out of all the Jade Shura. In a situation like this, she could still remain calm and evade the attack, but she was unable to dodge it completely. The red light went right for her face and broke a part of her mask off. Hansen teleported in front of her with his fist raised to punch her in the face, but when he saw her image, he stopped. He didn't want to punch her. Why do you look so familiar? Hansen was in shock. Yumingo looked just like Zero. If she hadn't looked older than Zero, he would have believed that Zero herself was standing before him. Kill me, if that is your desire. Yumingo stood where she was, seeing the fist in front of her. She gritted her teeth in anticipation. Tell me, what is your name? And from which Shura tribe do you hail? Hansen asked her. Hansen wanted to find out more about Zero, and although he'd never given up, there hadn't been clues for the longest time. Now that he had seen Yuminger, he was taken aback. Until he could figure out the connection between the two, Hansen was going to spare her life. Yuminger did not say anything. A door of light appeared behind her, and she ran towards it. In anger, she turned and said, Dollar, right? I'll remember you. I won't lose next time. Hansen watched Yuminger concede and did not move to stop her. He had decided not to kill her, so stopping her would be unnecessary. And even though she had said nothing about the fact, Hansen at least knew she was of the Jade Shura. She couldn't run from him. Chapter 1635, Armored Man Again Dollar had become the most famous person in the Fourth God Sanctuary, perhaps even the entire universe. Everyone was curious about the true identity of Dollar. To all the creatures in the fourth sanctuary, it didn't matter who Dollar actually was. They had all concluded that Dollar would definitely make it to the ranks of the Ten Son of Gods, and he might even win the entire divinities bout. Hansen didn't have the time to care about that after he went back to the Alliance. He immediately started to observe Zero, and the more he looked at her, the more he found that she looked like Jade Shura. Is Jade Shura Zero's mother or sister? Hansen was thinking. However, he didn't think it made much sense. Though Zero looked like a little girl, she wasn't young anymore. Jade Shura might not even have been as old as Zero. Hansen thought about it for a while, and he still went to see what he could find about Jade Shura's identity. She had actually shown her face, and she came from the Shura race. She had to have something to do with the Jade Shura family, so it should be fairly easy to find out who she was. After asking a lot of people, he found the information he wanted. Actually, it wasn't a difficult job at all. The news that Yumingo lost a dollar was also important news in the Shura race. Soon, Hansen learned that Yumingo was indeed someone from the Jade Shura bloodline. She was a daughter of the Shura Queen. However, before the Divinities bout, nobody knew that Yumingo was so powerful. A daughter of the Shura Queen? Does that mean Zero might be a daughter of the Shura Queen as well? No way. If she was, why would she look like a human being? Hansen felt that the information he had found wasn't accurate but he couldn't figure it out himself. I'll have to look for an answer from the Jade Shura bloodline, Hansen thought. You're reading a novel full thanks. Divinity's bout was still going on, but the competitors Hansen was about to fight all chose to back out. Nobody dared to fight him. Hansen went through a very peaceful competition period, but at the same time, another major event happened in the Divinity's bout. The Outer Sky leader was defeated by a creature nobody knew, and he was crushed. His body was destroyed with one punch, which shocked everyone in the fourth god sanctuary. It was just as shocking as Han Sin's defeat of six paths. 
The master of outer sky was a spirit, so he didn't actually die. Hansen felt sorry after hearing that. However, being powerful enough to kill the outer sky leader did make Hansen alert. After he heard more about the fight, Hansen became concerned. Based on Wang Yuhang's description, the guy who killed the master of outer sky with one punch was mysterious, and Wang Yuhang wasn't even sure whether it was a spirit or a creature. The being was wearing black armor, and his punch had wielded a fire that was powerful, yet icy cold. Outer Sky Leader's Geno core was frozen, after which it was crushed. He didn't even have a chance to struggle. The armored man from the Iron Chimenea? A terrifying being popped up in Han Sin's mind after he heard Wang Yuhang's description. Han Sin's stomach felt a little upset at the thought. If it was actually the armored man from the Iron Chimenea, Han Sin couldn't be guaranteed to defeat him. Hansen still remembered the fight between the headless rockman and the black armored man. In Hansen's memories, the man in black armor was already much more powerful than many of the strongest beings in the fourth god sanctuary. Hansen didn't think he could kill Outer Sky's master with only one punch. Hansen went to see the fight of the man in black armor in the next round. Though the competitor chose to quit the battle, Hansen still saw the armored man, and it was indeed the one from the Iron Chimenea. Why did he come to join the divinities bout instead of enjoying his time in the Iron Chimenea? Hansen couldn't understand it. Hansen studied the bracket of upcoming fights, and he found that he wouldn't meet the man in black armor until he became one of the Ten Son of Gods. That was relieving. If he fought the man in black armor and they both got crushed, others would exploit their weakness, and then it would be a tragedy for both of them. Luckily, he would enter the top ten before he had to worry about that. Because of the armored man, everything was changed now. Everyone thought that Dollar was likely to be the top of the Ten Son of Gods, but now people were discussing who was stronger, Dollar or the Armored Man. It was bizarre because nobody knew where the Armored Man came from, so no news was spread. Even other creatures didn't know that the Armored Man came from the Iron Chimenea. It's indeed a handful. The Headless Rockman couldn't even defeat the Armored Man with Destiny's Tower. Can I actually handle him? Hansen wasn't sure either. Hansen didn't run into any trouble in his battles. He went to watch the fights of the armored man several times, but all his competitors conceded as nobody dared to fight him. Everyone knew what had happened to the master of outer sky, so none of them were willing to take the risk. You're reading a novel full thanks. Hansen took a look at the contestants that the armored man was about to fight. After reading it for a while, he noticed that Gu Qiqing would run into the armored man before trying to become one of the ten son of gods. Gu Qiqing is indeed powerful, but that armored man was just wicked. I'll try to convince her not to fight. Hansen ran back to the shelter to find Gu Qiqing, and he told her about how he met the armored man and fought him. Sister Gu, that armored man is very dangerous, and his power might not even belong in the fourth god's sanctuary. Don't fight him. Otherwise, your beautiful face might get injured, Hansen said jokingly. What? You think I can't compete with him? Gu Qiqing looked at Hansen smiling. No, I just think he's like a monster or a beast. You're a beautiful woman, so it's not worth it for you to fight a beast, said Han Sr. Gu Qiqing stopped smiling. She looked at Hansen and said, if he's really from that Iron Chimenea, then there's more reason for me to meet him. Why so? asked Han Sr. Do you know what that Chimenea is? Gu Qiqing didn't answer Hansen's question but asked him one in return. How should I know? Hansen smiled. If he had known what the Chimenea was, he wouldn't have messed with it in the first place. Gu Qingqing's facial expression was veiled as she said, If your description is correct, the Iron Chimenea should be the alchemy pot of a famous Taoist. Are you saying that the Iron Chimenea belonged to an ancient human being? Han Sen's eyes popped, and he stared at Gu Qingqing. Chapter 1636, Armored Man's Background I haven't seen it yet, so I can't be sure, said Gu Qingqing calmly. Was there something like the Iron Chimenea in ancient times? Hansen found it hard to believe. Humans had been around for tens of thousands of years, and there was a time when humans didn't keep historical records. But even so, the history of humans was not as long as that of the Shura race, not to mention the ancient races like the Crystallizers. If humans had possessed something so powerful in ancient times, they would have risen in the universe a long time ago. They wouldn't have taken so long to gain power and the Shura wouldn't have maintained dominance for so many years. At that point in history, humans controlled some strange items. Actually, you have one yourself, but it isn't as powerful as it used to be. 
Gu Qiqing looked at Hansen with a smile. You mean Taya's sword? Hansen thought about it, and that sword was the only thing he had with a rich history, which came from the era of Gu Qiqing. Gu Qiqing nodded and said, Taya's sword was mighty before it was broken. When I left, Taya's sword was still one of the top ten sacred swords, but out of nowhere, it got broken. Lots of things were lost or destroyed around that time, and I don't know what happened after that. There's one thing I can be sure of. If the Iron Chimenea is as you described, it's probably an alchemy pot. Is it used for making medicines? Asked Han Sr. Gu Chiqing paused for a while and said, In that era, many Taoists wanted to become angels, and making medicines was one of the ways to achieve that. It was very popular among the Taoists, and the most famous alchemy pot was the Long, living pot that belonged to the Taoist Su Fu. Su Fu? I've heard that name somewhere before. An emperor in ancient times once went to find medicines that could help him live forever. Was that him? Hansen asked after a moment of thought. He had heard that story when he was in kindergarten. Gu Qingqing shook her head. He wasn't an emperor. Su Fu was a very famous Taoist, and he was great at making medications. He was using the Chimenea to reshape his own body. Reshape his own body? He wanted to turn himself into a medication? Hansen was very surprised. Of course not. He was using the Chimenea to train his body, and he absorbed the forces from the medication. He then condensed the medications and tried to become an angel. Unfortunately, modern science has proven that there isn't anything like heaven, and the so-called Taoist technique back then was proven to be just a rumor. Only a few seemed to actually break the space and ascend. Perhaps nobody actually succeeded, and even if one succeeded, nobody knew where they went, but it wouldn't be heaven. Gu Qiqing shrugged her shoulders. Han Sen's interest was piqued. If Dong Xin Zi broke through space and entered the sanctuary, then what about the other Taoists who broke through space? Did they reach the sanctuaries as well? However, that didn't seem quite right. Jade Little Lion King once said that his father had seen that Iron Chimenea when it was still young, and based on the age of the Little Lion King's father, that Iron Chimenea had been around much longer than humans had. If that ancient creature saw the Chimenea when it was young, there was no way that the device once belonged to humans. I think it's just a coincidence that they look alike. The Iron Chimenea has been in God's ruin for so long, and it's definitely older than human history. It's not likely that it's some pot that belonged to Su Fu, said Han Sen to Gu Qiqing. We need to see it first, said Gu Qiqing stubbornly. Seeing Gu Qiqing insist on fighting the armored man, Han Sen stopped trying to persuade her to concede. He had already warned her and told her everything he knew, so it wouldn't be his fault that something bad happened to her. The divinity's bout continued. Han Sen and the armored man didn't run into any obstacles. All the creatures and spirits conceded, so they passed round after round of battles without fighting. After half a month, the battle between Gu Qiqing and the armored man came. Gu Qiqing also had great performance in her previous battles, so many creatures and spirits were attracted to her fight with the armored man. Lots of creatures were speculating on whether Gu Qiqing had the courage to fight him. The truth was, Gu Qiqing was a very stubborn person. Even though Hansen warned her several times, Gu Qiqing still insisted on fighting the armored man. When she showed up on the battlefield, lots of people cheered. They were cheering for Gu Qingqing's courage, but at the same time, they would finally see the armored man strike again. Nobody paid any attention to the armored man until his fight against the master of outer sky. And after that fight, no creatures dared to fight the armored man, so most of the crowd had never seen the armored man strike before, and they didn't know exactly how powerful he was. Gu Qiqing was the first person since Outer Sky who had been willing to fight him, and this was the perfect time to see whether the armored man was indeed as invincible as the rumors said. Hansen didn't have a battle that day, so he left Shadow Shelter and went to watch the battle with Wang Yuhang and his friends. Hansen knew that Gu Qiqing was powerful, but that armored man was also terrific. Hansen wasn't sure whether Gu Qiqing could win or not, so he could only wish Gu Qiqing good luck. Old Han Will Sister Gu be okay? Wang Yuhang was a bit worried. He had watched the armored man kill Outer Sky's leader with one strike, so he knew how terrifying the armored man was. He was very worried. If she thinks she can do it, I don't think she'll have a problem. With her power, even if she can't defeat the armored man, she can still survive long enough to resign the fight. Nobody in the Fourth God's Sanctuary can stop her. Hansen could only hope for the best. Fleeing? 
It'll be the armored man who'll flee. Elysian Moon sneered and walked toward him. She then sat down on the stone steps. Let's hope so, said Hans Sr. Cheap Sheep and Green Cow also came to cheer for Gu Chi Ching. Unfortunately, Gu Chi Ching couldn't hear anything in the battlefield of divinities bout. The battle had begun. Gu Chi Ching walked into the battlefield, and almost at the same time, a door of light showed up in opposition to Gu Chi Ching, and the armored man walked out. Everyone was staring at the armored man, and they were all greatly anticipating his performance. All the creatures were still thrilled by how the armored man killed the master of outer sky with one strike, and many people wished to see the same thing happen again. Yu Chi Ching stared at the armored man thoughtfully. It seemed that she might have figured out something. The armored man didn't say anything. He raised his fist, and fire started to burn across his body. But the burning fire wasn't hot at all. Instead, it was cold as ice. Chapter 1637 Invincible Gu Chi Ching was more direct. She took out her blade and rushed toward the armored man, summoning a powerful sword light from her sword. The fist and the sword hit each other, and the fire shook and the blade light shattered. The terrifying forces exploded, creating a hole that was larger than a basketball court in the indestructible battlefield. The power of the attacks was already at the same level as Six Paths Trump technique, and all the creatures watching were thrilled. Hansen frowned. It seemed that Gu Qingqing's blade technique was better than he thought. However, the armored man didn't seem to care at all. The fire on his body got denser, and his power slowly grew. The battlefield became covered in flames, completely surrounding Gu Qiqing. Then the entire battlefield looked like an exploding volcano, and the tumbling flames rushed to the sky. The flames were the only thing the audience could see. Gu Qiqing and the armored man were nowhere to be found. Ping. A comet flew out of the flames and hit the wall of the battlefield hard enough to shake the stands. It was Gu Qingqing's body. She spewed out a mouthful of blood, which splashed everywhere. There was ice covering Gu Qiqing, and she looked like she had been coated in white powder. In the next second, the fire flashed toward her again. Gu Qiqing was terrified. She took a step back and went through a door of light she conceded and exited the battlefield. Everyone watching the battle was completely shocked and more than a little terrified. Gu Chi Chung had shown such incredible power, but she could barely survive two strikes from the armored man. That display of power had shocked everyone into silence. It was absolute power, and it was absolute suppression. Are you okay, Sister Gu? Hansen walked toward Gu Chi Ching and supported her out of the martial hall. He could feel that her body was very cold, and just touching her made his palms feel like they were about to freeze and fall off. I'm not dying said Gu Qiqing with her lips trembling. Come help her, little silver. Hansen called. The silver lightning fell on Gu Qiqing's body, and after half an hour, Gu Qiqing started to recover. It's okay now. After more than an hour, Gu Qiqing seemed to be recovering a little. Little silver then stopped treating her. Is the armored man really that strong, Sister Gu? Asked Wang Yuhang. Gu Qiqing shook her head without saying anything. After leaving the martial hall, she told Hansen to come and see her. The armored man is indeed using the skills of a Taoist. So he is actually Su Fu? asked Han Sr. Gu Qiqing shook her head and said, No. Though he's using the skills of a Taoist, his power doesn't seem like a human's. He feels more like a creature to me. Hansen frowned and looked at Gu Qiqing, as he didn't know what Gu Qiqing was trying to say. Gu Qiqing cleared her head and continued, do you think it's possible for a creature to learn the skills of a Taoist? Is that really possible? The powers of both creatures and spirits are inborn, so they can't change them. They might be able to learn some techniques or concepts from humans, but the power itself couldn't be changed, Hansen said thoughtfully. Gu Chichin considered that for a moment. You said that the armored man is staying in the Iron Chimenea, right? If it's actually an ancient Chimenea, the creature might be training itself in the Chimenea in order to change its body enough to use the techniques of the Taoists. A mutant creature with the power of a Taoist? Hansen was really disturbed. Though Hansen knew nothing about that era or how powerful the Taoists were, he could still tell from Gu Chi Ching that the Taoists were exceptional. A powerful creature with the abilities of a Taoist was indeed a nightmare. The armored man won again and the news shocked everyone in the fourth god's sanctuary. They originally thought that Dollar might be able to fight that armored man, but after the fight with Gu Qiqing, they all thought that Dollar would most likely be defeated by the armored man. 
Even a random attack from the armored man could rival the most powerful strike from six paths. The power gap was obvious. How can there be such a powerful being in the fourth sanctuary? The fact that he still hasn't broken space and become a god doesn't make any sense. Perhaps he's a god fallen to the fourth sanctuary. I don't think there'll be any suspense in the divinities about this time. The armored man will be ranked first and Dollar will come second. Indeed, no suspense. That armored man is just too powerful. Even great beings like the master of sacred shelter had given up. He just hoped that he could get into the top ten, and he didn't count on getting first place anymore. The power of the armored man was making people desperate. As for Hansen, he didn't think that way. The armored man was indeed incredible, but he wasn't invincible. Gu Chi Ching survived two strikes from him, at least. As long as he wasn't invincible, Hansen still had a chance. Hansen asked Gu Chi Ching about the details of her fight with the armored man, and about the kind of skills the armored man actually used. According to Gu Chi Ching, the power the armored man used was the Dan Sha technique, which was very famous in her era. He condensed power into a medication, and when that medication exploded, the power it yielded was much superior to what the armored man possessed himself. Yu Chiching told Hansen that the armored man's body wasn't much stronger than hers. The first strike of the armored man was the power of the armored man himself, and Gu Chiching was strong enough to rival it. However, the power contained in the armored man's medication was much stronger than Gu Chiching, and the second punch contained that sort of power. Gu Chiching couldn't resist it, which was why she lost. The divinities bout continued. Hansen got into the Ten Son of Gods. As for the armored man, Nobody dared to fight him anymore, so he became one of the Ten Son of Gods too. After all Ten Son of Gods were chosen, the Divinities bout was over, and the final matches were the ranking competition for the top ten. Each Son of God needed to fight the other nine Son of Gods, thus giving the final ranking. Everyone thought that the Armored Man would reach first place. Even some of the Son of Gods said that they wouldn't fight the Armored Man. After, all the creatures treasured their lives. Even the spirits who had the power of resurrection didn't want to be killed for nothing. Chapter 1638 Instructor Hansen had been studying ways to defeat the armored man before the ranking competition of the Son of God started. Hansen wasn't sure how powerful the armored man could be when he fully triggered his medication. If the armored man had shown the full extent of his power in the fight with Gu Chi Ching, then Hansen's own physical power, when combined with Little Angel and his blood pulse technique, could defeat the armored man. Hansen found somewhere silent to combine with the little angel. The power infused his entire body, and his strength immediately surpassed the emperor level. There wasn't any downside to combining with the little angel, so Hansen had been fighting in this mode. However, Hansen wasn't sure if he could defeat the armored man or not. Hansen tried the blood legion technique while under this status. Hansen's blood slipped out of his veins and suffused his flesh, which made some strange changes in Hansen's body. Suddenly, in Hansen's Sea of Soul, Destiny's tower started to shake as if it were responding to the changes in Hans Senator it was no longer peaceful like it had been. Hansen summoned Destiny's tower and held it in his hands. He tried to control the Geno Core to make attacks. He didn't actually fight, because he just wanted to see how long he could last under this status. The results beyond his best expectations. After combining with the Little Angel, Using the Blood Legion technique didn't place a huge burden on his body. He lasted for a whole day before he gradually felt kind of tired. I think I should have enough time, and I don't think it's going to take that long to end the fight. After separating himself from the Little Angel, Hansen felt that his body was much weaker than before. It seemed that the Blood Legion technique still had a significant impact on his body, but merging with the Little Angel significantly weakened that influence. When he returned to the Alliance, he found Little Flower and Bauer playing in the yard. Zero was drinking tea on the stone chair beside them as she watched the two play. Zero, are you bored here? If you are, you can go to the sanctuary. Hansen felt a bit sorry for Zero. To ensure that his family would be safe, he asked Zero to stay in the Alliance to look after Little Flower and Ji Yanran. It had been very unfair to Zero. Zero gave a very calm smile, and she poured a cup of tea and put it in front of Hans Senator, she also filled her own cup, held the tea close to her face, and breathed in the steam as she sipped it. Looking at Zero, Hansen suddenly felt relaxed, as if nothing else actually mattered. No matter who she is, I won't let anyone hurt her, Hansen promised himself. He then took the cup, 
took a sip, and enjoyed the moment. Instructor, I still can't find Qingya. Perhaps he's already dead. Inside a palace, a man in a cape saluted a man sitting on the throne, who killed Qingya. The man sitting on the throne looked very young, and he didn't look like a human being. He had silver hair and a bloody scar between his eyebrows. There was a spiral horn on his head that made him look like a unicorn, and at his back were a pair of golden dragon wings. With that golden crystal armor, he looked exceptionally powerful. We haven't found out yet, but with Qingya's power, I can't think of anyone who could have killed him. Even the disciples from Blood Legion, while they might be able to defeat Qingya, I can't imagine that they could actually manage to kill him Qingya. The only one I can think of who could kill Qingya that easily is the chairman of the new community, said the caped man. Why him? Does he really have that kind of power? The instructor said, looking at the caped man. The man in the cape lowered his head. That chairman of the new community is too mysterious. We still aren't sure where he came from, and we aren't sure if he is like us. We don't even know if he is from Blood Legion. Qingya joined the new community to study him, so he's the greatest suspect. But we can't say for sure that he is the one who killed Qingya, said the instructor. If we want to know if he killed Qingya, just let me go and test him. Then we'll know whether he has the ability to do so, said the man in the cape. The new community is a part of our organization, and I have a pact with the previous chairman that I won't interfere with their issues. If we can't be sure that the new chairman is indeed someone like us, we'll just leave him alone for now, said the instructor calmly. Then what about Chinya? asked the man in the cape, raising his head. Put it out of your mind for now. If the chairman of the new community really did it, we'll figure it out sooner or later. There's something more important for you to do now, said the instructor. Please. Do tell, said the man in a cape with his head lowered. You've heard about the two creatures and the divinities bowed in the fourth sanctuary, right? Asked the instructor. I did. Instructor, do you think that they might belong to Blood Legion? Asked the man in the cape. The instructor shook his head. That's not possible, but something is indeed strange. Have some people in the sanctuary inspect them and find out who they are. Instructor, they are almost invincible in the fourth sanctuary, which we cannot enter. The creatures we have in the fourth sanctuary might not be able to deal with them, said the man in the cape. No need to deal with them. Just send our forces to see if they are really human beings or not. That is enough, said the instructor calmly. Okay, I will go do it now. I have God is still in the fourth sanctuary, and with its power, it should be able to tell whether they are humans or not, said the man in the cape. Have you figured out who the masters of the other three Geno cores are? Asked the instructor. I haven't identified the masters of real blood or bulwark umbrella yet, but the master of that crystal core might be Han Senator. I'm still trying to confirm it, the man in the cape said after some thought. The Hans again? D asterisk a minute. Just go and confirm his identity, the instructor said with a complicated facial expression. After a few days, the ranking contest of the Ten Son of Gods began, and Han Sen's first opponent was the master of sacred. Hansen wasn't afraid of Sacred's master now, and if the divinity's bout hadn't been taking up his time lately, he would have already rushed into Sacred's shelter and killed Goddess. He now hoped that Sacred's master wouldn't concede, as it would be a good opportunity for him to kill Sacred Shelter's leader. He just needed to engage in one-on-one -on -one combat in divinity's bout, but if he went to Sacred shelter, he would be forced to deal with lots of super beings, which would be much more difficult. After entering the battlefield, Hansen saw that Sacred's master was already on the battlefield, and he wasn't backing out Hansen was very pleased. Chapter 1639, Sacred Domain Goddess was in the martial hall of Sacred Shelter, watching the divinities bout a man covered in holy light walked onto the battlefield. Almost everyone in the fourth sanctuary knew about Dollar now. However, as Goddess looked at Dollar, she felt that he seemed familiar. It wasn't because she had seen his fights like everyone else. She felt that she had met Dollar before, but she couldn't recall when or where. It was natural that Goddess couldn't recall. She couldn't link this peerless being with someone who was defeated by her dog in a single strike. And also, Goddess hadn't given Hansen a second look. Before she actually saw Hansen clearly, her black dog had already smacked him into a wall. Goddess thought Hansen had already died, which was why she could kind of remember his shape, but she couldn't remember where she actually met him. Sacred's master entered the battlefield and summoned a golden scepter into his hands. There was a pair of wings on his back, 
and he was wearing a beautiful armor. The golden scepter in his hands was gleaming, and he looked fabulous in the outfit. He really looked like some god from a religious legend. Hansen looked at the master of sacred shelter, and he was considering how he could kill his well-dressed opponent without giving him a chance to concede the battle. Everyone in sacred shelter was a super creature, and sacred's master was a berserk super creature. Even if Hansen's super geno points were already maxed, he was still very interested in the beast soul and geno core of a berserk super creature. Before Hansen moved, Sacred's master started to strike. He raised the scepter in his hand, and the golden crystal started to release a gleaming halo, covering the entire battlefield with golden light. Hansen was completely invincible under his super king spirit mode, so he wasn't afraid of that golden light at all. However, when the golden light fell on Hansen's body, it felt strange. It was as if the golden light wasn't giving out any forces, and it didn't affect Hansen's body. Although he couldn't be sealed or dampened as a super king spirit, he would still feel something. Even if it wasn't destructive, Hansen would at least feel something. However, Hansen didn't feel anything, which meant the golden light wasn't trying to attack at all. Hansen couldn't tell what the golden light was used for, but he didn't have time to think about it. Sacred's master raised the scepter in his hands and rushed toward Han Sr. Hansen stood still, and when the scepter was about to hit his body, he raised blow blood to his mouth and blew it toward the master of sacred shelter. Ping. Even a great being like sacred's master couldn't handle the destructive power of blow blood. The bloody light went through the face of sacred's master, and his entire head exploded. In the next second, the creature's head recovered as if nothing had happened. The scepter moved toward Hans Sr. Hansen frowned a bit, and he hit the scepter with his fist. The giant force from his fist bounced the scepter away, but it didn't injure Sacred's master. Sacred's master noticed that his own power hadn't been reduced much, and he was exhilarated. He dashed toward Hansen with the scepter in his hands again, with that terrifying golden light. Hansen defended himself against the crazy attacks from Sacred's master while shooting streams of bloody light with blow blood. The bloody light hit Sacred's master and exploded on his body again and again, but Sacred's master seemed to be a true immortal, like some kind of god. No matter how injured he got, he could recover in less than a second. It was recovering instead of healing. When his flesh and blood exploded, his body didn't knit itself back together, it was just instantly restored to its previous state. Hansen realized that Sacred's master was recovering so quickly because that golden light was helping. Inside the golden sacred light, the master of Sacred could endlessly store his body, and injuries meant nothing to him. They couldn't even weaken his power. No wonder the Golden Light didn't have any attacking power. He's using the power on himself. Hansen was a bit surprised in his heart. Dollar isn't that strong after all. He's just a little bit stronger than Sacred's master. Dollar is indeed inferior to the armored man. The master of Outer Sky, who was just as powerful as Sacred's master, was killed instantly by the armored man, yet Dollar can't even break Sacred's Golden Light. If he loses this battle, he might not even get the second place of the Son of Gods. No wonder Sacred's master is a top-tier demigod. Dollar is still too young. Dollar seems to be much weaker than I expected. He isn't as tyrannical as that armored. Man at all. I think Dollar just relied on his Geno Core. Without his Geno Core, he is just barely a top-tier being. You can't say that. Dollar hasn't used his self Geno Core yet. So it's difficult to say who will win and who will lose. It doesn't matter, really. Even if he wins, do you really think he is now qualified to fight the Armored Man for first place? Fight for first place? The Armored Man will definitely be the first place, and Dollar is likely to be the second place. Sacred's master was indeed a top-tier being, and he wasn't at a disadvantage at all against Hansen in Super King Spirit mode. Within his golden light, he was like an undying god, and the fight became quite heated. Hansen was quite interested in the golden light of Sacred's master. He didn't care what the onlookers were talking about. He put away the blow blood Geno core and summoned the six paths sword that six paths had left behind. Though Hansen couldn't use the six paths sword as well as six paths emperor, Hansen didn't intend to practice the entirety of six paths sword technique. He only simulated the last technique, six paths as one. Though it was only around 60% alike, the power was still terrific. The power in the sky and earth flooded toward the six path sword, and the power in the sword grew stronger and stronger. Everyone was pretty surprised. 
Other people couldn't tell Han Sen's power, but they were all very surprised that Han Sen was able to perform the blade technique six pads as one. It was conceptualized and created by six pads himself, and it couldn't be used simply by wielding a six path sword. When Hansen performed it, it looked very much like the real six paths, so everyone was amazed. When the power in the swords condensed, Hansen slashed toward the scepter instead toward Sacred's master himself. Sacred's master was scared. He didn't dare resist the six paths sword directly, so he dodged it. Six paths as one could be used several times, and that was what Hansen did. Though the power wasn't as strong as what six paths himself wielded, it was still incredible. Sacred's master didn't dare to let the six paths sword hit the crystal on his scepter, so he conceded and quit the battlefield. Though Hansen won the battle, many people lost confidence in him. Nobody thought that he could beat the armored man anymore. Chapter 1640 Sen Luo Illusion The fight between Han Sen and the armored man was Han Sen's fourth fight. Aside from Sacred's master, Han Sen also defeated two other son of gods. Though he defeated them, his performance seemed to pale in comparison to the Armored Man. The Armored Man didn't have to fight at all, as all his opponents immediately conceded. Hansen wasn't as frightening as he was. All the creatures were speculating on whether Dollar would actually dare to fight the Armored Man. Hansen didn't think about it that much. He was still practicing the Dongshin Sutra like usual, hoping that he could advance Bulwark Umbrella to super level. Ji Yin and Win of the Company. Hansen, Little Flower, and Bauer were at home. Little Flower and Bauer were playing in the garden, while Han Sen was practicing the Dong Shin Sutra. In the afternoon, Ji Yin and still hadn't come back yet. She was very busy in the company, and she needed to do overtime in the afternoon. Han Sen thought about it, and then he took Little Flower and Bauer to the street for some food. Father, I want ice cream, Bauer said happily, holding Han Sen's neck. Okay, since your mom is not here, let's get wild today. You can eat whatever you want until you are full, said Hansen, smiling. Yeah, Bauer cheered. Hansen didn't want to drive them to the shops himself. It was much easier to just ride there. They arrived at the street, and they stepped onto the automatic portal, arriving at the business center. The three ate happily, and they toured all the restaurants and food stands. Hansen wasn't afraid that Bauer and Little Flower would get food poisoning. Their bodies were strong enough to resist even real poison not to mention ordinary food. Little Flower was only one year old, but he could already eat a lot, a lot more than ordinary adults. However, he was very polite and quiet, and he was very elegant even when eating food. After eating, Hansen went to the bathroom, and he put Bauer and Little Flower in the children's entertainment area. Bauer and Little Flower sat on small chairs as they played. Suddenly, a lady walked toward the children's entertainment zone, and she arrived at the doors. She was stopped by the AI. Lady, you didn't put a child here. Is there anything I can help you with? Said the AI to the woman. Of course. The lady put her hands on the AI, and the machine exploded. Nobody panicked because of the explosion. The entire children's entertainment area seemed to have been cut off from the building. Everything happening here seemed to have nothing to do with the building anymore, and everyone overlooked the area. Other kids were still playing, but Bauer suddenly jumped off the seesaw. She walked to Little Flower, and she stared at the woman walking toward her with her large eyes. You can actually sense me coming. It seems that you're not just a pet for companionship, said the lady as she looked at Bauer, smiling. Please leave now, sister. My dad is very ferocious. He doesn't like women. If he sees you here when he comes back, he'll be angry and kill you. Bauer stood in front of Little Flower and looked at the lady. Then I'll leave soon. I don't like men who are very ferocious either. I only like boys who are cute and beautiful, the woman said while she moved her body. She teleported beside Little Flower and reached toward his collar. Bauer immediately grabbed Little Flower and jumped up. She dodged the woman's palms and rushed toward the exit of the children's entertainment zone. The woman was surprised. Those people are idiots. Their intelligence is completely wrong. A pet for companionship? Even ordinary top-tier demigods are not this fast. Ping. As Bauer tried to run out of the children's entertainment zone with Little Flower, they seemed to hit an invisible wall, and they bounced back immediately. The woman smiled and walked toward them. Even if you're a pet at the demigod level, it's still useless. If you don't want to be killed, stand there and don't move. Sister Bauer doesn't want to die, but if I lose my brother, my father will beat me to death. 
You're so beautiful, so you must be a very good person. Help me, okay? Don't take my brother away, Bauer begged, looking at the woman. What a cute pet. I just want to take you back. And eat you. The woman licked her lips. Her tongue was long and thin like a snake's, and it looked absolutely bizarre. Bauer is still very young, so I don't have that much flesh for you to eat. How about you wait for a few years, and when I grow up, you can come to eat me, Bauer said with her eyes wide open. Little Flower looked at the woman curiously. You're so smart, but there's no use in stalling for time. Even if you're one of Hansen's beast souls, you can't get through my Sin Luo illusion to contact him. Don't even think about it, the woman said while moved her body again, teleporting over to grab Little Flower. Bauer grabbed Little Flower, and she was extremely quick. The woman teleported several times, but she still couldn't touch Little Flower, so she was upset. She looked at Bauer for a second. The woman then said, those people are all useless. They actually think a powerful pet like this is only for companionship. I'll have to ask the instructor to punish them when I go back. And then, black and purple smoke started coming out of her body, filling the entire children's zone. The smoke looked like threads, and they moved toward Bauer and Little Flower. There was black and purple smoke everywhere, so Bauer and Little Flower didn't even have a place to move anymore. The black smoke touched other children, and it bound them like ropes. The kids were all falling down on the ground. Some kids were terrified and wanted to cry, but they found that after they were bound by the black and purple smoke, they couldn't even cry out loud because their mouths seemed to be sealed shut. They could only cry silently with their eyes wide open. The black and purple smoke that looked like hands sealed all avenues of escape for Bauer and Little Flower, and then it started to attack them. Bauer slapped her palm and then a small gourd showed up in her hands. She held it toward the black and purple smoke, and then the smoke was quickly sucked into the gourd. What is that? Is that a genocore? How can a bee soul have a genocore? The woman looked at Bauer in fear as all the black and purple smoke was sucked into the gourd. Chapter 1641 Inexcusable After Bauer sucked up all the black and purple smoke, she grabbed Little Flower and hit the wall behind them. However, when they broke through the wall, there was another invisible wall blocking them, and Bauer and Little Flower bounced back again. Bauer's eyes spun, and she stomped on the ground, kicking a large hole in the floor. Suddenly, the supermarket on the first floor was visible. However, they didn't fall through the hole in the floor as there seemed to be an invisible screen holding Bauer and Little Flower back. There were people walking down there in the supermarket, and nobody noticed the large hole above them. They were still walking and buying stuff as nobody noticed what was happening. As I've told you, it's useless. You can't get out of my San Luo illusion. The woman looked at Bauer with interest. You're indeed a fascinating pet, but sadly, I don't have time now. If Hansang comes back, things will get more complicated. So back off. Otherwise, I'll kill you now. You're really cute, and it'll be a shame to kill you now. Even if I'm gonna kill you, it should be on the dining table. sister. Why do you want little flour? He doesn't even have as much flesh as I do. If you want to eat flesh, you can just take me, said Bauer, blinking her eyes. The woman sneered without saying anything more. Black and purple smoke began to waft from her again, and this time, it didn't attack Bauer and little flour. Instead, it rolled down her own body. The smoke quickly covered the lady's body, then twisted and condensed. Gradually, it formed a heavy purple and black crystal armor making the woman look like a robot. Hong. After donning that black and purple crystal armor, the woman stepped out again. Her body tore apart the space around her, and she ran toward Bauer and Little Flower. Bauer was dazed. She dragged Little Flower backwards, but they couldn't dodge the woman's palm. Bauer saw that the woman's hand was about to grab Little Flower's shoulder. Bauer grabbed Little Flower abruptly, clenched her fist, and punched the woman's palm. Ping. Bauer bounced away immediately, and she hit the invisible boundary. There was blood coming out of her mouth. The woman didn't give a D asterisk M in about Bauer. Instead, she reached toward Little Flower again. Bauer clenched her teeth and climbed up from the ground. She rushed toward Little Flower again and defended against the woman's palm with the gourd. I'll kill you if you want to die. The woman was kind of infuriated. Her hand that was covered by her purple and black crystal armor clenched into a fist and she hit the gourd. Ping. Bauer bounced away and hit the boundary again. There was still blood coming out of her mouth, but with the gourd as a buffer, 
She wasn't injured like last time. Bauer climbed up quickly again, and she stood in front of Little Flower, glaring at the woman. The woman didn't hesitate at all. She kept punching, and Bauer kept using her gourd to ward off the attacks. Her small body kept bouncing away, yet every time, she rushed back. Katcha. After being hit several times, cracks appeared on Bauer's gourd. Bauer clenched her teeth and went back to Little Flower, and facing the woman's fist, she grabbed her gourd and rushed toward. Then the gourd was smashed. Bauer spewed blood out everywhere, and her face turned pale immediately. The smashing of the gourd seemed to be a huge blow to her. She climbed up from the ground again, and there was blood everywhere on her body, and she couldn't even walk straight anymore. However, she still went back to Little Flower and opened her arms, standing in front of her little brother. Impressive. A demigod pet can take so many of my punches. However, this is your last chance, because I'll kill you this time. The woman raised her fist, and there was still smoke all around the black and purple armor. It looked like the hand of a devil, emanating terrifying force. Bowa stared at the woman's fist and said coldly, He's my father's son, and he's my brother. Nobody can harm him in front of me. Really? The woman sneered, and the terrifying fist tore the space apart. It hit Bauer, and the force seemed to be able to destroy the entire world. Bauer was waving her fist, and she rushed toward the woman's attack again. Ping. Bauer flew out like a star again, and her body hit the invisible boundary. There was the sound of bone cracking, and the blood in her mouth opened like a flower, and her body fell on the ground. Bauer tried to stand up again, and after struggling several times, she wasn't able to do so. One of her arms had been broken and twisted into a weird shape. She couldn't use her power. The woman looked at Bauer, who was half dead already. She didn't want to waste any time. She reached toward Little Flower beside her. I've told you. Don't touch Little Flower. A sound came from beside her, and it was Bauer. The woman turned around and saw Bauer kneeling on the ground, struggling to hold herself there. She was trying to stand up, but she just couldn't do it. Then come and stop me, said the woman disdainfully. She didn't give a de-asterisk game in about Bauer and she tried to grab Little Flower. Little Flower looked at the shadow of the hand that was reaching toward his head, cloaked with that black and purple armor that looked like a devil. He then cried, and there were tears dropping from his eyes. Hong. The woman had almost grabbed Little Flower when a terrifying force rose beside her. She suddenly felt that she was in extreme danger. She reacted quickly and backed off a little bit. She looked around, and she saw Bauer standing up from the ground. However, the space around her was already twisted, so the woman couldn't see her body straight. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. You made Little Flower cry. Inexcusable. Bauer raised her head and glared at the woman. Her eyes were gleaming with terrifying light as if she were a ghost from hell. The woman was intimidated. She couldn't help taking some steps back, and then she realized what she was doing. She said to herself with contempt, It's just a demigod level pet. I was actually intimidated by that. I've been comfortable for too long. She turned to Bauer. I thought you were interesting, so I wanted to spare your life so that you could tell Hansen what happened. Since you really want to die, I'll satisfy your wish. The woman then condensed the power in her fist, and she threw it toward Bauer. Only I can bully him, yet you made him cry. You deserve to die, Bauer glared at that woman as if she didn't see the fist with the terrifying force. She became more and more belligerent and anyone who saw those ghostly eyes would have been scared. Chapter 1642, My Toy The woman's fist hit Bauer. Bauer didn't even try to dodge or block it. She just glared at the woman. Dang. The woman's pupils suddenly shrank as her fist was about to touch Bauer's body. A strange light emanated from Bauer, and a soft leaf extended out of her ragged shirt. It grabbed the woman's fist. The terrifying force of the woman's punch hit the soft golden leaf, but the leaf wasn't knocked away or damaged. Instead, the leaf only trembled a bit. How is that possible? The woman stared at Bauer in horror. Even a top-tier demigod couldn't resist the power she had after she put on a Geno armor. She didn't know where that leaf came from that it could resist her fist. She took a few steps back and stared at Bauer in horror. The gold leaves extended from Bauer's body and covered her like scales. They formed a unique leaf armor and cloaked Bauer as if she was a child wearing golden dragon scales. However, they weren't dragon scales. They were just golden leaves that looked like they belonged on a maple tree. Geno armor. How is it possible? 
Why can a pet have a Geno armor? Impossible. The woman finally saw what it really was, but she couldn't believe her eyes. What are you? Bauer didn't hear what the woman said. She stared at the woman with her terrifying eyes and walked toward the woman step by step. I'll use your blood to pay for the tears of Little Flower, she hissed. Impossible. Impossible. It's impossible that they can use their self Geno armors here. Impossible, the woman screamed, and the black and purple light surged again like a volcano exploding. She dashed toward Bauer, as if she had gone completely mad. Previously, the woman had still been controlling her power, but now, she didn't have any concerns anymore. She just wanted to kill Bauer, and as her power exploded out from her, even the residual waves of her strength could crush the entire children's entertainment zone. Even if Little Flower could survive, the other children wouldn't. However, just when the woman threw her punch, Bauer's body appeared right in front of the woman, and the small hand covered by golden leaves pressed against the woman's fist. The raging power of the devil flames withered away under the Bauer's palm. Suddenly, the entire world became peaceful again. The woman felt her eyes popping as if she had seen a ghost. She tried to pull her fist back, but she found that her hand was being held as firmly as if it was in a vice. Seeing Bauer's eyes, which were filled with bloodlust, the woman was terrified. You deserve to die, Bauer squeezed the words out of her mouth as if each word was tainted by blood. After finishing the last word, Bauer clenched the woman's fist harder and threw the woman up into the air. Ping, ping, ping. Bauer teleported in front of the woman instantly, and she punched the woman with fists that were like hammers. Each punch left a giant hole in the woman's armor, and they cracked the flesh and blood and bones inside the woman's body. The Geno armor is being crushed. Ah. The woman couldn't help screaming as she couldn't think of anything else now. Bauer's fists kept crushing the armor and hitting her body directly, rolling her in the sky and forcing her to scream. Blood dropped like rain, and the fragments of her Geno armor also flew everywhere. Her entire body was twisted, and finally, she couldn't even make a sound anymore. Hong. With the last punch, Bauer completely smashed the woman's rugged Geno armor and her body, and blood fell like rain. Right after the woman died, the Sin Luo illusion disappeared, and the golden leaf armor on Bauer's body also disappeared. She was still holding a gourd, and she sucked all the blood and fragments into her gourd. Aside from some broken grounds and facilities, no evidence of the fight was visible anymore. Don't be scared, little flower. I'm here. I won't let anyone hurt you. Bauer walked to Little Flower and touched his head, giving him a smile. However, in the next second, Bauer fell down beside Little Flower. Sister Bauer, Little Flower held Bauer, and he looked very worried. Children who had gotten free suddenly started to cry, and the owl of the supermarket found that the children's section was damaged. The owl gave a warning, and all the security people rushed to the children's entertainment zone immediately. Everyone nearby rushed toward the entertainment zone regardless of whether they had left their children there or not. They wanted to see what was happening and whether they could help. It was a chaotic scene, and when Hansen arrived, he found Bauer lying beside Little Flower. He was terrified. He immediately checked Bauer's body. Fortunately, Bauer was still alive, although she was very fragile and weak. Hansen took Bauer and Little Flower and rushed home as fast as he could. He took Bauer into the sanctuary and asked Little Silver to help her. Only Little Silver could save Bauer now. Little Silver used the power of Silver Lightning to cure Bauer. Though it took a very long time, Bauer began to recover, and Hansen was relieved. Bauer was safe now. However, she had been gravely injured, so she needed a long time to recover. Hansen asked Little Silver to keep curing Bauer. As for him, he went back to the Alliance to ask Little Flower what had happened and why Bauer was so injured. Little Flower was only about a year old, but he was already able to talk a lot. Although he couldn't describe much, Hansen still understood what had happened. That woman. Is that woman from the gods' organization? She dared to attack Little Flower. Fortunately, Bauer was there. Otherwise, she might have actually gotten what she wanted. D asterisk came in it. Hansen couldn't be more furious. After more than ten hours of healing from Little Silver, Bauer finally woke up. However, her body was still very weak, so she wouldn't be able to recover in a short period of time. After waking up, Bauer grabbed Hansen and asked, Is Little Flower okay? Little Flower is very safe. 
and he didn't get injured. You protected him, and he's safe because of you. You're an excellent sister. No, you're the best sister. Hansen suddenly felt terrible. Hmph. Little Flower is one of my toys. Only I can bully him. Nobody else can bully him, said Bauer, pouting. Chapter 1643, Fighting Armored Man Hansen learned everything that had happened from Bauer, and he became more and more sure that the woman was a member of God. Hansen was silently enraged the whole time. After listening to what she said, he asked a few more questions and did not lose his temper. He did not say anything further. He let Bauer continue to rest, and he went to the Marshall Hall. The God organization was very strong, and its core members had already risen to the Fifth God Sanctuary. Obviously, they possessed even more Geno armors. Hansen knew that if he wanted to really eradicate the threat, he had to stand at the same height. Strength. I need more strength. Hansen stepped toward the Marshall Hall, and there was pure rage burning in his heart. He hadn't had this feeling of powerlessness for a long time. He hadn't even noticed when the God organization attacked Little Flower and Bauer. If it wasn't for Bauer, he couldn't imagine what the consequences would have been. Strong. I have to be stronger. Hansen's body gradually turned into the Super King spirit when he entered the Marshall Hall. He was completely transformed into a Super King spirit. Today was the time of his battle with the Armored Man. He had been hesitant about this fight. He wasn't sure he could win the battle, and he didn't want the two of them to injure each other. But now Hansen realized that he could never back down or return to what he had been. He must get stronger and stronger to be able to cope with unknown and powerful enemies. Divinity's bout had already been packed with various creatures. Even the martial halls of the major shelters had already been packed to max capacity. All creatures wanted to know if Dollar would fight the armored man. He's really coming. It seems that Dollar isn't willing to quit. It doesn't matter. He is too much weaker than the armored man. Watching such a battle will still be worthwhile. Fighting Dollar will let the armored man show more strength. Seeing the image of the blazing white light appearing on the battlefield, all the creatures watching the battle were excited. Most of the spectators didn't care whether Dollar won or lost. They would get to see an exciting battle either way. Will Dollar be okay? Even Tang Zhenliu couldn't help but worry that the armored man was too strong. People couldn't see any hope of Dollar defeating him. Gu Qingqing's injury was almost recovered. She also came to the Marshall Hall to watch this matchup, but she had not spoken. She just looked at Dollar in the light and shadow and the armored man who had just entered the battlefield. Luo Haiang was also watching this game, looking very dignified. Almost all the strongest beings of the fourth sanctuary were watching this battle, and among them, there was a very special existence. It was a dragon-like creature, but it had four pairs of eyes on its head. The eight eyes were divided into two rows, and they almost reached the top of its head. The eight eyes were different from normal eyes. Each eye seemed to be a Tai Chi they were black and white, with white pupils in the black eyes and black pupils in the white eyes. It looked very strange. The eye of the gods. The god commanded that you see clearly what kind of creatures they are. You have to look carefully and be sure not to miss anything. Next to the eight-eyed dragon, a strange squirrel-like creature called. You can rest assured that with my god's eye, I will see who they are, the eye of the gods said with full confidence. Its eight een and yang eyes looked at the light and shadows in the martial hall. The continual rotation of the yin and yang eyes seemed to pull the light and shadow into its eyes. Gradually, a figure emerged in its eyes. However, it was a bit strange that the figure reflected in the eyes was neither Hansen nor the armored man, but a white jade. The jade took the form of a dragonfly skeleton with fire burning beneath its eyelids, and the gaps between its bones also burned the eyes' flames. It looked strange and gorgeous. After watching for a while, the Eye of the God smiled and said, The armored man is a creature of the shackles, not a human being. Let the gods be relieved. This is too simple for my eyes. The other one, what kind of creature is the one who calls himself Dollar? The squirrel was not happy because of this and pointed to Han Sen's figure. Wait, I will see. The light and shadow of the eighteen and young eyes disappeared and then started running again. Slowly, a figure appeared in his eight eyes. This time, the figure that emerged was the super king spirit body that Hansen had turned into, with its long, white hair of the body. Light surrounded the body like a flame. The squirrel kept looking at the eye of the gods. After seeing Hansen's figure being reflected, he immediately shouted, Is there a problem with your god's eye? 
The eye of the gods frowned and said, My gods, I will never go wrong. If the reflection remains the same, that means this is his original body. Does that mean he isn't human? Asked the squirrel. Should not be. The eye of the gods said hesitantly, looking at Hansen on the field. On the battlefield, after the armored man entered, his body ignited with horror. He walked toward Hansen step by step like some god of ice and fire. With every step, the flames on his body grew stronger, but they did not go to Hans Senator in front of him. The flames shrouded most of the battlefield. The flames followed the armored man, and the whole heaven and the earth were turned into flames around Hans Senior. Everyone held their breath. The momentum was too repressive, so they stopped breathing unconsciously, and their eyes were staring at Hans Senior. Hansen summoned the little angel to merge with himself. The spectators couldn't see the little angel. They could only see Hansen's holy light, rising like a volcano, and a pair of white wings spread out behind his back. A halo appeared over his head and a transparent sword in his hand, exuding a sense of purity and brilliance in the light. After combining with the little angel, Hansen began to run the Blood Legion technique, causing his body to change again. The blood slipped out of his blood vessels, suffusing his organs, flesh, and bones. It made his body completely different from an ordinary human's, or even from a creature. Feeling the incredible power generated by his body, Hansen did not hesitate to summon his Destiny's Tower immediately. He wanted to win this fight. The moment that Destiny's Tower appeared, the armored man's eyes got colder. They stared at the Geno core in Hansen's hands, and the flames on the armored man's body became even more terrifying. To the spectating creatures, it was strange to see Dollar summon a tower-shaped Geno core instead of his coin or blow blood Geno cores. Destiny's tower had been gone for too long, and most of the creatures had only heard of it. No one had ever seen what it actually looked like. It was also impossible to think that Hansen was holding the legendary Destiny's tower. Chapter 1644 Real Blood Promotion the armored man stared at Destiny Tower, and the flame of the body erupted like a volcano, and the aura he exuded became unimaginable. The armored man is trying to kill Dollar directly. His power is so horrible when he gathers it like this. It seems that he's gathering more power than he used to defeat Gu Chiching. The fact that the armored man has gathered such terrifying power only shows that. Dollar is stronger than Gu Chiching, so the armored man has to be serious. Dollar. Cheers beat him. That kind of power can kill with a single strike. If Dollar insists on fighting, then there will be no chance to concede. Boom. The armored man slammed into Hansen, and the flames were as bright as the sun. The entire battlefield was covered by intense ice, and the spectators could not see anything at all. Hansen felt the incredible power of the approaching attack, but he didn't panic. He moved his hand and lifted Destiny's tower. The blaze that was so strong, yet frighteningly, it disappeared completely in a flash. The sudden transition left the spectators temporarily blind. After they recovered their vision and saw the situation on the battlefield, they were all stunned and their mouths gaped open. The flames on the battlefield had disappeared completely. Both the flames and the armored man had disappeared. Only a huge octagonal metal tower was standing on the battlefield. No way. The armored man was suppressed by a metal tower? It's not that simple. With the power of the armor, even if the tower is a super geno core that uses ceiling power, I think it will be broken by a punch. I can't even imagine what kind of geno core could suppress such a strong force. Let's wait to see if the metal tower will be broken. Everyone felt that a tower could not trap the armored man, so they were waiting for the metal tower to be broken. No one believed that the armored man would be so easily suppressed. In fact, Hansen did feel the pressure in the Destiny's Tower, and a horrible force was confronting the power of the Geno Core, as if the tower would be broken at any time. Destiny's Tower was not Hansen's self Geno Core. According to the theory, Hansen's power should not affect Destiny's Tower. However, after running the Blood Legion technique, Hansen felt that the tower was reacting strangely. The strength of the Geno Core was affected by Hansen's blood and flesh and the Blood Legion techniques. Hansen's own power surged and rushed into Destiny's Tower, increasing the tower's strength more and more. However, the armored man's power was still slowly expanding inside the tower, and Hansen still couldn't suppress it with all his force. Now Hansen had a tough choice. He had to suppress the armored man in the tower. If he let go now, Destiny's Tower would be destroyed, 
and Hansen would also be injured. Hansen was still running the Blood Legion techniques, transforming his own power into the same fatal power as Destiny's Tower. The strength of the armored man continued to grow, and it was definitely stronger than Hansen's own power. Hansen couldn't help but frown. When Hansen hesitated to deal with it, the real blood Geno core automatically flew out of Han Sin Sea of Soul. This time it was not flying toward another Geno core or anything else, but it integrated into Han Sin's body instead. Real blood gradually merged into Han Sin's blood. Suddenly, the power of Han Sin's blood and nerves increased sharply. Destiny's tower filled with light, suppressing the power inside the tower. Han Sin was ecstatic. He hadn't even known that real blood had such an ability but it made perfect sense. The real blood Geno core had been condensed by the blood vessels, and its compatibility with the blood legion techniques was undoubtedly the highest. It was also reasonable that it could enhance the blood legion techniques. As Hansen's blood flowed, it was assimilated into real blood. At the same time, Hansen's blood, nerves, and blood legion techniques became stronger and stronger. The infinite power passed through Destiny's tower to suppress the power inside the tower. The two forces collided fiercely in the tower, and Hansen finally gained an advantage. The real blood Geno core also began to evolve in Hansen's blood. After it merged with Hansen, the blood flow in his body helped the Geno core break through its bottleneck and achieve super level. Everyone was waiting for the moment when the metal tower got broken, but time passed by, and nothing happened to the tower. No cracks appeared on its surface. What? Can the armored man not break the tower? I don't know. It looks like the tower is very solid. What is that Geno core? How can it suppress the armored man? Even if it is a super Geno core, isn't it impossible to suppress the armored man? The creatures watching the battle gradually began to discuss, and no one believed that a mighty existence like the armored man could be suppressed by a tower. That tower, it seems, the master of sacred shelter looked at the tower, but his eyes were filled with confusion. Could that be Destiny's tower? Many ancient beings, like Sacred's master, began to speculate. Dollar is too good. He just suppressed the armor-like. That was F Asterisk King amazing. Tang Zhengyou could not help but scream excitedly. Gu Qiqing was slightly amazed. Although she didn't think that Dollar would lose easily, she hadn't expected anything like this to happen. He didn't even do a thing, and the tower just suppressed the armored man. The armored man roared angrily in Destiny's tower and the ice flames exploded like a volcano, trying to break the tower. However, the blood light emitted from the metal tower formed a bloody ring. It slowly began to contract outside the armored man, pressing the ice flame down a little. No matter how the armored man roared, the blood ring kept shrinking. Ping! The flames were shattered under the blood ring, and the blood ring made physical contact with the armored man, still shrinking. Surprisingly, the body of the armored man became smaller as the blood ring shrank, and finally disappeared with the blood ring. At the same time, on the seventh floor of Destiny's Tower, a stone platform appeared. The figure of the armored man appeared on the stone platform, but now he couldn't move, just like a prisoner locked on a stone platform. Hansen finally felt that the resistance in the tower was completely gone. When he reached out, Destiny's Tower gradually shrank and flew back into his palm. The battlefield and all the martial halls were dead silent. Before this battle, they had debated many possibilities, but no one had thought that this would happen. The powerful armored man had been suppressed so easily, and everyone was staring at Hansen, who stood on the battlefield and did not say a word for a long time. Chapter 1645, Son of God Reward When Hansen left the arena, much of the audience had yet to react. Everything had occurred so quickly, their minds were having trouble processing it. They had expected a shocking battle, but not like that. And it ended very abruptly. People did not know about the changes that had taken place in Hansen's body and Destiny's tower. They had only seen Hansen summon a metal tower to crush the armored man, then absorb him. That was scary. Dollar is the scariest. An elite like armored man was completely suppressed. Who said Geno cores couldn't beat strength? It does not matter how strong you are, you can get absorbed. Dollar is too strong. He is invincible. What was that tower Geno core? It was so strong. The battle had ended a while ago by this point, but everyone was still discussing the fight between Dollar and the armored man. The tower Geno core was the center of many discussions as well. Many super elites thought the tower was Destiny's tower, 
but according to the legend, it should have gone along with its master in ascension to the fifth sanctuary. Humans didn't care about where the tower came from, though. Everyone simply concerned themselves with the fight between Dollar and Armored Man. It had led to Dollar being titled the strongest human to ever exist. Hansen did not have time to dwell on these matters, though. He was currently standing inside Destiny's Tower and looking at Armored Man, who was now trapped on one of the pedestals. Armored Man yelled at him, but no matter how much he tried, he could not escape the space shield. Hissing and cursing were all he could accomplish. I'm going to kill you. Armored Man repeated that more than a few times. Answer my questions and I might let you go. Hansen looked at him and then asked, Who are you? What is your relation to the Master of Destiny's Tower? You're reading a novel full thanks. Armored Man simply ignored Hans Senator. He kept repeating the same few words over and over, as if he was a loon. Hansen asked a few more questions, but there was no change in response. So Hansen decided to let him be until he calmed down. He could return to ask him questions another time. Hansen was very curious about the Armored Man and the Headless Rockman in the tower. Since Armored Man disappeared after his fight with Hans Sound and did not finish any other matches, people believed he had been killed. It made them all fear Dollar even more. So, no one dared fight Hansen in the next few matches. They were afraid of his tower. Even spirits that were able to respawn did not want to take a risk. It was okay being killed, but finding themselves trapped inside the tower would be the most terrifying situation they could think of. After advancing through the top 10 Son of Gods, Dollar ended up at the lofty number one position. Furthermore, it was Hansen's very first number one Son of God position achieved in a divinities bout. He had joined a couple divinities bouts before, but for various reasons, he was always unable to reach first place. Everyone was in agreement that Dollar was the most powerful being to exist in the fourth god sanctuary. When Hansen finished the divinities bout, he entered the martial hall to receive his reward. The tenth son of God had one randomized chance of a random item. It might have been a beast soul, a geno weapon, or a geno core. What they received was all down to pure luck. Hansen was interested in what other rewards he might now be fortunate enough to receive. He was interested in the god's baptism. Hansen placed his hand on the Marshall Hall's tablet. It began to glow, and then an item was revealed. It then began to flash through different items, making Hansen's eyes go all funny. You're reading a novel full thanks. What reward should I accept? Hansen wanted to borrow some luck off God, but there was nothing there he truly wanted. In the fourth God's sanctuary, he was practically invincible. There was no point in getting a super beast soul, as all he could do with that was sell it off or give it to a friend. The same applied to Geno cores and Geno armors. What Hansen wanted to do was ascend to the fifth sanctuary and see if he could go back to the Alliance. Received one pet beast soul Geno core. When the light stopped, Hansen froze. Peppy Soul Geno Core? What is that? Hansen was surprised, seeing what his reward had been. Beast Souls were Beast Souls, and Geno Cores were Geno Cores. A Pet Beast Soul was a Pet Beast Soul, by this logic. On the tablet, Hansen could now see a glowing orb. It became a shining light that entered Hansen's Sea of Soul. Little Angel saw it and flew right over to it. She grabbed the orb and swallowed it. Little Angel's holy light began to show unsteadiness, but it calmed down after a while. And when it did, Little Angel looked different. Hansen reviewed her information, though, and he couldn't see any changes. She seemed the same. But now was not the time to investigate Little Angel. He needed to receive his second reward, something Hansen believed to be rather important. Hansen put his hand on the Marshall Hall's tablet again. The tablet then revealed a slit, which Hansen's hand fell into. Hansen was familiar with this, as it was what led him to the arena. He wasn't afraid of this process, and so he immediately went inside. After he traveled through the tablet this time, though, he was not taken to the arena. He was taken to a tunnel. The path was tubular, as if he was traversing a pipe. It was three meters long, and it appeared to have been made of flawless, seamless crystal. Hansen, seeing the way ahead, was shocked. The crystal looked like that of the crystallizer's main control room. Is the sanctuary related to the crystallizers? Hansen frowned and walked forward. There were glowing lights residing within the crystal walls. The lights were like tangible feathers, bathing Hansen and melting into him like snowflakes. Hansen felt a surge of electricity course through him and get discharged. He did not feel stronger, and he didn't feel as if he had been purified. 
He wasn't quite sure what the purpose of those lights was. The passage was long, at least 10,000 meters from one end to the other. At the very end of it, Hansen found a large door. Before he could open it, though, it opened itself automatically. There was a room beyond it. Hansen looked into the room, and when he did, his eyes opened wide. Chapter 1646, Man in the Can The room looked just like the Crystallizer's main control room. There were many active Crystallizer machines. He had already expected such sights, so Hansen wasn't surprised by their presence. But this Crystallizer-like room was inhabited. Hansen saw a person inside. Hansen did not know if the person was dead or alive, as he was standing inside a tank made of crystal. The tank was full of liquid, which surrounded and supported the man. The man had short black hair, and he was clad in a set of crystal armor. It looked similar to the one Hansen had taken from Tina. Aside from that, there was nothing outstanding about the man. By all accounts, he looked like an ordinary human. There were no extra physical abnormalities that would have suggested him to be a creature or spirit. Is that a human? Hansen was not sure. He used his Dongshin aura to scan the tank. Strangely, his senses could not penetrate the surface. He was unable to get a reading of the man's energy and determine if he was alive. But when Hansen approached the tank, he heard a voice. It said, The machine has an error. God's baptism cannot be completed. Please wait or turn back. Hansen looked around, unsure of where the voice had come from. But Hansen could definitely tell it was an owl of sorts. It wasn't the voice of something living. Hansen chose not to leave just yet, though. This place surprised him, and the wait could give him a chance to understand the place some more. Something must have happened there, which had resulted in the crystallizer equipment breaking. If I am correct, this crystal tank is the equipment used for God's baptism. Hansen walked around the room, thinking. After a brief examination, he turned his attention back to the tank. Hansen was confused. He wasn't sure if the man in the tank was a person supposedly undergoing the baptism, or if he was the operator of the room. What happened here? Why is this place broken? Is it living or dead? Hansen had a lot of questions. The room did not look damaged, and there was nothing special there aside from the man in the tank. Connection to control room has been successfully established. Would you like to open the door? The beetle symbol on Hansen's hand began to glow, and then the voice of the owl sounded again. Open. Hansen was happy about this. He was now sure that place belonged to the crystallizers. It looks like the sanctuary has a connection to the crystallizers. I just don't know if they discovered the sanctuary like humans did, or if they actually created it. Hansen looked at the light from the beetle, lost in thought. A crystal wall parted silently. Hansen looked towards it and was surprised. There were many crystallizer buildings beyond the wall, but many had been brought to ruin. The place was crumbled and broken. Hansen commanded the beetle to walk him around, as there were no perfect machines or buildings there. All the structures there were large, and they were similar to what could be found in the Forbidden City. The further Hansen ventured through that place, the more ruins and destruction there was to witness. Hansen eventually came to a ruin that was in better condition than the others. After Hansen came to the edge of the building, he looked out and saw something very strange. There was a sky out there. It wasn't strange to see the sky, as the sanctuary had a sky. But the sanctuary's sky was different from the sky of a normal planet. There were many planets in space, but no one knew what was above the sky in the sanctuary. Hansen stood where he was, looking out into space. It looked just like the space he could see from any planet in the Alliance, but the stars he could see from there seemed closer than usual. It made him feel suppressed, somewhat. Hansen flew up into the sky and took a look at the crystallizer buildings from above. He noticed the place had been built atop a meteor, and it was actually floating through space. Hansen did not know if he was in the Alliance, though, as there were no constellations he could see that were familiar to him. Hansen summoned his beetle. After entering, he brought out his map of the galaxy. He only wanted to give it a go and see if it worked, and it did. The map displayed his location without issue. Hansen was in a system called the Yichuan system. There were seven or eight areas there that had been taken by the Alliance. Hansen determined the specific place he was in, a barren stretch of space that the Alliance hadn't yet claimed. But at least he knew now that he was back in the Alliance. It would take a long time to get to familiar territory from where he was. It would be annoying to go back, so Hansen remained on the meteor. The beetle scanned the meteor and Hansen learned that the meteor was once part of a planet that had shattered. 
The Crystalliza buildings were part of a big control room, and this was all that was now left of it. Hansen couldn't learn anything more amidst those ruins, so he returned to the room. He checked out the man in the tank. The armor the man wore was a Geno armor, and that meant he was not in the top ten son of gods. He hadn't come there for a baptism. Then who is he? Was he one of the people that once controlled this place? Or was he perhaps an invader? Hansen looked at the man. Hansen did not know if he was living or not, so he didn't dare open the tank. To be able to own Geno armor, you had to be very powerful. Hansen wasn't confident. He wasn't in the fifth sanctuary, and he could not make use of his own Geno armor. Hansen had a set of crystal armor, but his body could not harness a sufficient amount of power to make use of it efficiently. As Hansen mulled what to do, he heard the sound of Katcha. Something broke, and then he witnessed the crystal tank open. The crystal tank, that was as tall as a tree, started to open up from the upper regions. When the tank opened, the liquid didn't splash out as Hansen had expected. Instead, it hovered in the air, remaining inside the now open tank. Hansen looked at the man with caution. As he was thinking about whether or not to leave, the man opened his eyes. A pair of black eyes stared at Hansen, and it made his heart jump. Chapter 1647 Misunderstanding Splash The man collapsed in front of Hans Senator before Hansen could react. The man was picking himself back up off the floor. The liquid inside the tank had been an almost jelly-like substance. It remained in the open tank, just wobbling in place. None of it actually came spilling out. Who are you? You have walked into the main control room. You know you will die for this, don't you? The man spoke to Hansen with the human language. Before Hansen could respond, the man saw the open door. Outside, he saw that the exterior had become a total ruin. When he noticed that, the expression on his face changed. Betrayer. You must die. The man was enraged. His armor emanated with a scary power, and he tried throwing a punch at Hans Sr. Betrayer? Hansen wanted to explain, but he could feel that the power headed for him was far too strong. If he stood and spoke, he'd most likely end up dead. Hansen summoned his white crystal armor and threw a punch to intercept the man's fist. He felt as if he had hit a train, and the sheer force sent him flying away. His body hit a crystal wall and he ricocheted off into an open plane of space. He flew so far away, and when he finally came to a stop, he heaved blood. The blood floated in the empty air around him. There was no gravity, so it didn't fall. It looked rather strange. The man came right before Hansen and threw another punch. Hansen thought the man was 2D asterisk MN strong. He was far stronger than Hansen, and he had Geno armor. It looked as if he was the one who could utilize the full strength of such a set of armor. Hansen had yet to learn how to do this. Hansen transformed into Super King Spirit Mode and combined with Little Angel. Then, he used the Blood Pulse Sutra. Even with all that, he was still at a disadvantage. He was punched another two times, and more and more blood came out with each hit. Stop it. I'm not a betrayer of any kind. I came here for a baptism, Hansen exclaimed. It was okay to have an enemy, but it wasn't okay for him to be framed for something he hadn't done. He wasn't who the man thought he was. Pa, you're trying to find an excuse now? How can a creature from the sanctuary possess a Geno armor? You are not a creature from the sanctuary. The man did not believe Hansen, and he continued throwing punches. The man's skill was average, and he wasn't particularly dexterous. It was his strength that was incredible, and his speed, too. Hansen had to use his Dongshan Sutra and Phoenix techniques to keep up with the man. Hansen knew he couldn't win, though and the best he could do was kite the maniac. When Hansen actually did try to punch his enemy, his fist couldn't make a dent. Someone else gave me this armor. It isn't mine. If this was my own armor, shouldn't I be able to use its power? Why aren't I? Hansen tried his best to explain, despite the blood oozing from his aching mouth. The man froze and came to a total stop. He looked at Hansen and asked, You really are a creature from the fourth god's sanctuary? Yes. Follow me. If you don't believe me, I won first place in Divinity's bout. I took the passage that opened for me to get here. As Hansen spoke, he wiped the blood away. The man heard what he was told, but he ignored Hansen after that. He raced back into a room amidst the ruins and came back shortly after. I am sorry. You really did become the first son of God. It is my mistake. The man rubbed his nose and felt rather sorry for what he'd done. What is going on? Hansen asked the man. The man frowned. I don't know either. 
I was in charge, overlooking the C-3 control room. While I was soaking in the Geno fluid, the control room vibrated. Some power went inside me, and I must have fainted. When I woke up, I saw you. The place was like this. What is your identity? Hansen noticed the guy wasn't fully awake, but he still wanted to ask the man questions. Hansen still treated him with suspicion, but he listened. The man said, I am a soldier from the 3rd Division Special Forces. Which are you from? 3rd Division? Which one is that? Hansen was in the Special Forces, but there were many 3rd Divisions. He didn't know which one was being referred to. He had never heard of a regiment named so simply in the Alliance. How many 3rd Divisions do the Crystallizers have? The man looked confused. Crystallizer? Hansen was shocked, but he didn't shout it out and make his astonishment look obvious. He looked at the man and said, You are of the Crystallizer's 3rd Division? Are you not a Crystallizer? The man looked annoyed, but he went on to say, What happened here? Why is the main control room in such a state? Hansen was shocked. The man before him was a living Crystallizer. Hansen had guessed they might look like humans, but he never expected them to look identical. Hansen even thought the man might have been tricking him. He did look exactly like a human, after all. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. But don't get mad when I do, Hansen said, looking at the man. Go on. The man nodded and looked serious. Hansen thought even if he didn't try to explain how things were, the man would find out eventually. There was no need for him to lie. So, Hansen told him about the galaxy. The man listened to every word spoken, but his face turned green and pale like a light show. After Hansen explained, the man said, it looks like we lost, then. Lost? To who? Hansen asked. He didn't reply to Hansen, he just stared at him. After a while, Hansen's skin flared up with goosebumps. I'm certainly handsome, but you still shouldn't look at me like that, Hansen thought. Can you help me with one thing? The man asked. It depends, but if I can help you, I will, Hansen said. If it is possible, can you take me with you? I want to integrate with modern society. When the man asked this, he looked very embarrassed. Chapter 1648, Kindergarten Hansen almost choked. He thought there was something wrong with his ears. The man sounded like a school kid that had just graduated from school. He was a crystallizer with Geno armor, and Hansen thought it was strange that the man was making such a simple request. Don't worry. I won't live there for free. When I have grown accustomed to things, I will pay you back, the man said. Hansen heard him and coughed. He then said, Brother, that is not the issue. You can stay with us as long as you want. I have plenty of money, so that's okay. But I have a question. This place is far away from the Alliance, and there is no easy way home. Can you go through the sanctuary and come back with me that way? The man shook his head. I can't go there. But you can tell me where to head. If you do that, I can fly there with my Geno armor. Okay, but might you get into trouble? Hansen sounded worried. He was an elite that could destroy planets. The barons wouldn't kill him, but if he started a fight in the Alliance, who knew what terrible things might occur in the fallout? The man smiled and said, Don't worry. I'm a soldier. I have principles. And due to humans being quite close to crystallizes, I wouldn't think of harming you guys. That isn't what I meant. I mean, why don't you wait here so I can get you an identity? I can come and pick you up, too. How does that sound? Hansen told him. Okay. The man nodded, and he seemed to be in a pleasant mood. What is your name? Hansen asked. My name is Stay Up Late, the man said naturally. Stay Up Late? Hansen was rather confused by this. He couldn't tell if the man was joking or not. Stay Up Late's temper was still okay, so Hansen wished to ask more of him. He asked, did the crystallizers create the sanctuary? And what is its purpose? Stay Up Late shook his head. Half and half. The sanctuary already existed. We just made use of it. It was supposed to be a place we could fall back to, but now it is our last hope. What does that mean? Hansen asked, not understanding. Stay Up Late said, the galaxy is a lot more complicated than you think. The galaxy is a part of the sanctuary so we're still inside it if you exit the actual sanctuary. The man stopped talking, and this tease made Hansen's heart jump in his chest. He asked, what will happen? You can see the result. Look at what happened to us, the crystallizes. Stay up late looked glum. Hansen's face went slack. You mean, there are even stronger races in existence? Something beyond the capabilities of the crystallizers? Stay up late had a wry smile, and he said, 
Did you ever think about why the sanctuary is called sanctuary? Han sends face pal. Someone had researched this question before, but the answer was inconclusive. It could have been anything. The theory that was most agreed upon said that the sanctuary worked to contain the most powerful creatures, and in doing so, ensured the safety of the galaxy. But now, it seemed as if the creatures inside the sanctuary were actually being protected from something outside of it. And that applied to humans, too. Hansen asked a few more questions, but the man got annoyed. He said to Hansen, Think of it like this. The sanctuaries are kindergarten. Hansen froze. It took him a while to understand what he meant, but when Hansen asked something further, the man claimed he did not know. But Hansen thought there'd be plenty of time to ask him questions in the future, and he'd learn all there was to know from him eventually. I soaked inside the geno fluid for far too long, but it doesn't seem as if it is working anymore. If it was working, it could purify your body through a process known as God's baptism. Stay up late side, looking at the tank. You said humans are a small tribe of crystallizers. What does that mean? Hanston was not interested in geno fluid, so he asked this instead. Stay up late shook his head and did not answer. He just pointed at the path and said, You go back now and come pick me up. Hanson knew he wouldn't get the answers he wanted right now, so he did as the man said and returned to the Marshall Hall. After going back, Hansen had no time to do anything else. He purchased an Alliance citizenship forgery and bought a house on another planet for the man. He didn't dare keep stay up late near him, since Hansen knew that he wouldn't be able to beat the man until he reached the fifth sanctuary. The thought of having him stay in Hansen's house was like sleeping with a ticking time bomb by his side. Hansen didn't think stay up late was a bad person, but he knew he should take precautions. He didn't buy a house on his own planet for the man. When everything was prepared, Hansen flew the beetle to pick him up. The beetle had a built-in map, which was good, because he might not have been able to find the man if he had to rely upon the navigation capabilities of an Alliance ship. Hansen flew the beetle to stay up late, picked him up, and returned to the Alliance's inhabited space. Han placed the man in his new house and stayed with him for a few days to get him settled and show him how to live an ordinary life. When Hansen found an excuse to leave the planet and return to Han Manor, stay up late was there waiting for him. Why are you here? Hansen looked at him coldly. Don't worry, I'm not hostile. If I wanted to murder, no human in existence could stop me, right? Stay up late smiled. What is that supposed to mean? Hansen asked, putting out his hand. My mission is to protect the main control room and the first son of God. I have to observe you, so allow me to live with you, stay up late said. Why do you have to watch me? Hansen asked. I am looking for a qualifier, stay up late answered. What qualifier? Hansen's heart jumped. The diary he had found mentioned something similar to that. The diary must have been written by a crystallizer also in search of a qualifier. It seemed like this qualifier was something important to the crystallizers. It means what it means, stay up late said nonchalantly. There was nothing Hansen could do though. He couldn't beat the man so he had no choice but to take the man home with him. Chapter 1649, Summoning an Ingredient With Stay Up Late around, Hansen didn't dare go anywhere. He was afraid that if he left, Stay Up Late might harm his family. Fortunately, though, there was no explicit need for Hansen to return to the sanctuary due to the fact he had already maxed out his geno points. He could practice with hypergeno arts from the comfort of his own home. Stay Up Late did not do anything outstanding. And while he was living with Hansen, he actually helped out with the housework. Not long after, the man had gotten used to the livelihoods of humans. He even found employment for himself at a high-class hotel, where he could be a waiter. A waiter's profession was not to be underestimated, either, particularly in those days. Waiters were a luxury, and had very high-paying wages. But stay up late still wished to live with Hansen, something that made Hansen feel perpetually odd. Hansen. Is there a place I might be able to test my power without leaving a result or record? Stay up late asked Hans and out of the blue one day. If you'd like to go, there is a place I can take you to perform a private test. The data won't be recorded and won't be known by anyone in the Alliance. No one will see your numbers. Hansen himself was quite curious about the man's power. If it isn't too much trouble, please take me there. Stay up late said. Of course. Hansen agreed. He took an aircraft to a training room owned by Fong Jingqi. The Fong family had a lot of different business ventures, but Fong Jingqi was not there, currently. 
Fang Shueshi worked in the training room, though, and that saved Hansen some trouble. Fang Shueshi took the pair to an enclosed, private testing place. Then, the recording devices were turned off. Brotherson, I am leaving now. Call me with this if there is anything else you require. Fang Shueshi then gave Hansen a communication device. Okay, but do you have time later? Let's call Dan Feng and get something to eat. We haven't had a get together in a long time, Hansen said. Okay. Let me give Brother Fong a shout. We will leave once you are done, Fong Shueshi said with a smile. After he left, Hansen pointed to the machines and explained their functions. They were professional, state-of-the-art technologies. They could accurately gauge high levels of force, up to 100,000. That being said, Hansen knew the strength test would be useless. Stay up late gave the power tester a good hit. Then, the machine immediately hit the max number. The other tests displayed similar ridiculousness. Most of them were maxed out, and so there was no way for Hansen to tell what the exact number of his power was. But that was because he was making use of his Geno armor. If he did not use it, his body would only be a bit stronger than a top-tier demigod. But when he wore the Geno armor, his power really was nuts. Since you are here, why don't you give it a test? Stay up late asked Hansen after his own tests were concluded. Okay. Hansen knew Stay Up Late wished to see his results, and it wasn't as if Hansen was going to keep his abilities a secret Hansen actually fancied knowing how high his fitness level was, anyway. Hansen walked in front of the power tester. He gathered up his power and punched it hard. Stay Up Late looked at Hansen's data. He didn't allow his expression to change at all, but he was absolutely shocked on the inside. A body with these statistics can qualify him to be a new soldier and all the data is really weh distributed. It is very rare to see someone's fitness be so well balanced. He is most certainly qualified. If he could gather Geno armor, he might be able to go out. Stay up late retreated into thought after viewing Hansen's statistics. Stay up late watched Hansen finish his tests, and as he did, his eyes sparkled. After the test was done, Hansen, Fang Shueshi, and Zhang Danfeng went to meet with each other. Stay up late, in the meantime, went home. He wasn't going to follow them. When Hansen entered the sanctuary next, a month had passed. Crystal Core, Real Blood, and Coin had all reached superclass. Bulwark Umbrella had yet to hit that prestige, though. Hansen thought he could go and accept challenges in the Fourth God Sanctuary to level up the Umbrella and the Dongshin Sutra, but Dragon Lady asked him for help first. That was why he had come. Dragon Lady brought Hansen to Starcloud Field. That was far away from Hansen's own shelter. There were no powerful creatures or spirits there. Hansen was there because Dragon Lady fancied being Emperor class now. The only thing she was missing was a certain key ingredient to leveling up. Dragon Lady thought she could summon her ingredient to level up, but she did not know how well the summoning would go. She knew that it'd be a berserk super creature once it was summoned correctly, though, and for that, she'd require Hansen's help. She was not confident she had the ability to kill one by herself. To avoid the creature causing harm to the shelter, they had gone all that way to Starcloud Field. It was in the middle of nowhere. Are you ready? I am going to summon it. Dragon Lady, out on the field, asked Hans Sr. Yes. Hansen nodded. After receiving her answer, Dragon Lady summoned the ingredient. Hansen had seen Dragon Lady summon ingredients many times. Even before he met her, Serpent Throne simulated her and did the same thing to summon ingredients as she did. As a result, he wasn't surprised. But this one was special. When she began the summoning ritual, the bright afternoon suddenly turned into night. The sky was cloaked in blood-red clouds, like a crimson sea of thrashing waves. They blotted the sun and covered the entire sky. The whole region was dyed red. Hansen looked up into the sky, and from the bloody waves, a crack formed in the atmosphere. A scary energy came out from that tear, and it sent a chill running down his spine. Dragon Lady's face looked morbid. She had known that she'd end up summoning something powerful, but seeing all that was still a shock for her. A blood-red talon came swinging through the rip, and then, the rest of a red body. When it came out in its entirety, it roared into the sky. Roar. Hansen and Dragon Lady, after seeing it, were both surprised. This was far different than what they were expecting. The creature was actually like a wolf, and its size was no larger than an ordinary dog. But despite that, it was very red. So red, it looked as if it had been painted. After the blood dog roared, it leaped towards Dragon Lady. 
She was the one who had summoned the beast, so naturally, it made her its first target. It was Dragon Lady's ingredient, and thus, Dragon Lady was its ingredient. Blood Dog looked very angry and very murderous. It was like a red beam of light when it jumped at Dragon Lady. Dragon Lady made a call, lifted her fork, and thrust it towards the enemy. It became a light of its own, and it pierced right through the dog's body. She then lifted the dog's body into the air. Chapter 1650, Killing Blood Dog It happened in a millisecond. The blood dog's body suddenly split up into multiple parts, and they all became smaller blood bats. They then flew towards Dragon Lady. Dragon Lady was not weak. She was a king spirit, after all. She was also one of the strongest king spirits there was. Seeing the blood bats come towards her, though, she couldn't help but scream. She summoned a big pot out of the sky and used it to trap the blood bats inside. In the next second, Dragon Lady flipped the palms of her hands over. A fire began to blaze at the bottom of the pot, with the intent of cooking the bats that were trapped inside. The bats inside all gathered up together, becoming a blood dog once more. With canine strength, it leaped up and knocked the lid open. Then the beast leaped towards Dragon Lady once more. Dragon Lady summoned a cleaver and a frying pan. With both of them held akimbo, she did battle with the dog as if she was using a sword and shield. Hansen was surprised by what he was seeing. It was rare to see a spirit with so many different geno cores. It was almost as if she had more than Han Sr. That being said, she had told Hansen that her geno core was a set while it did look as if she had many geno cores. All her summoned cooking utensils were from the same geno core. Because of that, she could only take one rank on the leaderboards, unlike Han Sr. With that magical geno core and the power she possessed, the King Class Dragon Lady was able to do combat with Blood Dog. The field they were on was an unfortunate place for them to be, though. When volatile powers were cast, the ground was churned inside out and destroyed. Scars were left everywhere across the landscape, and it was difficult to find an open space with decent footing. Dragon Lady's fork could not stop the dog for long, so she tried slashing it, but when she did, Blood Dog again became a swarm of bats. They raced towards her and bit her. When that was done, they reverted to the shape of a dog again. Blood Dog looked immortal, and Dragon Lady's methods left her unable to do anything significant. If that were to continue, it was only a matter of time before she lost. Hansen was in no rush to fight, though. That was because Blood Dog had immortal powers. Even if he did strike, it did not seem as if it would help. He knew he'd have to find a weak spot first. Physical power did not seem to work. Dragon Lady's cleaver had whacked the beast a few times, and she had even brought it down on the monster's neck but none of that seemed to do a speck of damage. Any blood that was sprayed would turn into bats, and they'd fly back to the dog and heal. After watching the beast for a while, Hansen could not determine its weak spot. Dragon Lady was also starting to struggle. So, Hansen decided to summon Golden Growler and see how capable he was at fighting. Normally, Mount Beast's souls could not fight. But Golden Growler was different. When it was summoned, Golden Growler roared. It ran towards Blood Dog with insane speed. It was a far faster creature than Blood Dog was. Blood Dog wished to dodge Golden Growler, but Golden Growler already had its mouth open. While its body was the same size as an ordinary lion, its maw opened to the size of a house. Blood Dog was unable to dodge, and it was scooped up by Golden Growler's mouth in a flash. Then, it was chewed up. There was a wretched, crunching sound, as if the bones were all being broken. Don't eat it. It's my ingredient, Dragon Lady quickly said. She was worried Golden Growler would swallow the dog and she'd lose her precious ingredient. It didn't happen, though. Golden Growler was only able to chew it for a while, before a swarm of bats came flying out of its mouth. When the bats were formed to the shape of a hound again, Blood Dog looked at Golden Growler with obvious fear. It wanted to fly and escape. Blood Dog was incredibly fast, and it far outpaced Dragon Lady who was left unable to keep up. Get up. Hansen mounted Golden Growler and spoke to Dragon Lady. Dragon Lady jumped up behind Hansen, and Golden Growler carried them both in the pursuit of Blood Dog. It was much faster than the summoned creature, but the dog was very devious. It kept changing direction, and the lumbering Golden Growler was unable to keep up with that. When Dragon Lady got close to Blood Dog, she slashed towards it, but attacks such as that would not work on the fiend. Do you have a way to kill it? Dragon Lady asked with a rush. She was obviously unable to kill it, 
and she had no choice but to ask Hans Sr. I don't know how to kill it, either. Blood Dog is invincible, it would seem. It'll be very hard to kill. Hansen shook his head, as he hadn't had any promising ideas yet. Dragon Lady kept trying to kill Blood Dog. None of her attempts worked. Golden Growler chased the creature for 10,000 miles. Blood Dog kept running and running, until it suddenly came to an abrupt stop. It turned around and smiled at them. Hansen and Dragon Lady were given a spooky shock by that smile. It wasn't really a smile, it was more of a cruel, menacing grin. It was an evil display that only looked like a smile. It was, in fact, very scary. Golden Growler was not afraid, though. It continued after Blood Dog. The Blood Dog jumped toward the mountain in front of it, and when the Blood Dog hit the cliffside, it fell inside. The wall did not break. It was like the dog could just fall through the walls. Golden Growler was unable to do this, and when he came against the wall, he came crashing into it. Hansen had a blackout, but he opened his bulwark umbrella to prevent any follow-up sneak attacks. When Hansen's consciousness returned, he discovered that he had not been attacked. But what he saw surprised him and Dragon Lady both. Behind the wall was not an underground labyrinth. It was just a field. There were lots of fallen buildings there. There was half a tower scattered across the ground and a palace comprised of slopes. There were many stone constructs there, but they were all in ruin. It did not look as if they had been built there, though. It was more as if someone had just thrown them all away and dropped them there upon the field. Hansen didn't see where Blood Dog went to. He looked around and eventually found a human that was half buried in the soil. It was actually the effigy of a woman. She was adorned with a crown that was reminiscent of the sun. One of her hands held a book, and the other held a torch above her head. There were a few more statues about, but they were all destroyed. Hansen looked at the buildings and the statues, and he frowned. The style of the rock was similar to that which he found in the Valley of Time. The stone was very similar.